you doing? It's me, Gina. Yeah, I'm driving. I'm not wearing a seatbelt, neither. Blow me. Before Pops became the fattest stool pigeon in history, he was my hero. If there was an award for Father of the Year, Pop would have got it. Dog Francesco says hello. <laughs> <laughs> then this happens. So I look at the FBI guy and say, you stinking feds can blow me. I ain't testifying against nobody. Then the man from the Fed says, but the mob is gonna kill you and your whole family, Jimmy. You with me so far, kid? I get it, you're turning rat. Just wait, there's more. If you testify, we can give you immunity. Do you know what immunity means? Enough with the fucking puppets! <laughs> oh! Now, Pops is the puppet and the feds are the ones pulling the strings. This is the thanks I get for saving all your lives. And if you don't think I'm better off dead than living in Canada's icy butt crack, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Clowns think he can avoid me? We have nap time together every day. Now cough it up. The new kid already took our money. What are you little crap stains trying to pull? Who's this new kid? <sighs> Just give me another wedgie and let me go. Another wedgie? Mm. Who gave you the first one? Ah, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> 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 Statue on Earth, dumbass. <gasps> I know this looks bad, but for once, I'm innocent. I think the furnace is on the fritz. What's 10 degrees in American? Dunno. Depends on the exchange rate. Apologies for the intrusion, but I'm here to save the day. What's with the pantyhose? It's a unitard. I'm Maple Man. Maple Man? Canadian superhero? Fighting minor infractions and belligerents everywhere? You look unitotted, Captain Leaf. <gasps> Teresa, why are you dressed up as Sapling Girl? Maple Man's trusty sidekick, who's always getting him out of sticky situations? I'm just wearing what they gave me for my job as a booth babe at Regina Comic Con. <gasps> Do you know what this means? Of course not. You'll be working with Bentley Withermoon, the renowned actor who plays Terrence Timber, AKA Maple Man. Sounds like a lot of nerds. I better bring my pepper spray. Teresa, you have to introduce me to him. So much of my belief system is based on the teachings of Maple Man. Well, it's a hundred bucks for an autograph, 300 for a photo, or a thousand to brush his hair. I have to go sell my stamp collection. Hey, can I borrow your brush? Gina. You have irreparably damaged school spirit here at Celine Dion Elementary. Don't worry, our hearts will go on. The only place that'll accept you now, my dear, is Our Lady of Peace School for Wayward Girls. Not the nuns. No! Anything but the nuns! That's right. Enjoy that juice while you still can. <laughs> the only snacks the nuns will give you are warm holy water and stale body of Christ. Yummy! <gasps> Thank you for coming, Mr. McDougal. I came as soon as I got your call. You got a real sultry phone voice. Well, I'm afraid Gina's in a great deal of trouble. Your fancy skeleton statue nearly crushes her, and she's the one in trouble? You got a lot of nerve, Professor. Next thing you know, she'll be blaming you for this hat that I stole off the special ed kid. Well, we talked her down to a one-day suspension. Pretty good for your old man, huh? Just wait till I get my hands on that kid who framed me. Knock out his teeth for me, will you? I miss reading Rainbow for this. Five seconds and I'll be shaking hands with a syndicated television legend. Okay, that's it for today. Maple Syrup Man will be back tomorrow. For some reason. Teresa! Teresa! Introduce me. Uh, Tabitha, 
I had some notes regarding your booth babing skills. Shall we discuss them over a drink? Sorry, I left my fake ID at home. <laughs> Don't worry. No one asks for ID in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm really tired from wincing at people's breath all day. Most girls in your position would leap at the chance to get a few tips from an industry veteran. Sorry you were in the war, but thanks anyway. See you tomorrow. Teresa, you gotta introduce me to- Buzz off, nerd! <laughs> Oh, I didn't recognize you in your pajamas. Can I ask you a question? Shoot. You ever worried a... I said shoot. Come on, it's your turn. Oh, right. <laughs> you missed. What a loser. Cheech, you ever worry things are slipping out of your control? Yeah, but I got special underpants for that. It's this mystery kid at school. He's haunting me. And I don't even know what he looks like. The kid without a face? How am I supposed to sleep now? Let me tell you, Francis Bacon once said... No, wait, it was Kevin Bacon. He said, knowledge is power. Yeah, I should snoop around, find out who this kid is. Good idea, Cheech. Oh, and if you call me a loser again, I'll slice your fucking nuts off. Ooh, you're tough, but fair. <laughs> Get the file on the new kid and check the teacher's lounge for snacks. Not in that order. What the hell is this? In case you gotta hack into the mainframe or some shit. Hey, why is my locker open? What the hell is this? It's a picture of the best summer of my life. <gasps> Carmine! I'm back! Oof. That's for getting me suspended. Not that I care, but still. And that's for breaking Celine Dion. Oh, what was that for? That's because I missed you. I'm impressed. Must have took a lot of determination to track us down. You know, your pop killing my pop and all, it, it gets you out of bed in the morning. That, and I wanted to see you again. Muscling in on my marks was a nice touch. And you're short. Shut up! I grew one and a quarter inches since last summer. I mean on the vig, you chiseling mook. I got expenses. Taking a cab all the way from Brooklyn wasn't cheap. The meat is still running. You want to lift to your house? What was I, born yesterday? Come on, I'm going to find Cheech sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. These vendettas take a lot out of you. Well, good luck finding him. The guy's a phantom. He lives in the shadows and moves as silent as a warm breeze. Hurry up, Gina. Cheech's Falcone is getting bored! Anyway, Carmine, I ain't gonna make getting the Cheech easy for you. I wouldn't want you to. Last time I had any real fun was when you and me mixed it up at camp. You mean when I kicked your ass? How do you know I didn't let you kick my ass? And the gloves are off. <laughs> if you say so. I left you a juice box and some crackers. See you soon. You backstabbing son of a whore! Open this door! Fruit punch. Oh, you remembered my favorite! What's she doing here? Replacing someone who doesn't know how to play ball. Oh, I know how. Just not with yours. Sadly, Tabitha, you lack the talent to portray a convincing sapling girl. Like it takes talent to have a unitard jammed up your butt. I'll have you know I majored in unitards at Juilliard. Come on, Petey. Let's get away from Doctor Who wants me to touch his wiener. But I sold my stamp collection. I told you the furnace wouldn't fix itself. Now the toilet water's frozen. I know, I've been chipping yellow ice all night trying to get my cell phone out. Cheech dropped a deuce and it's just sitting there, mocking me. That's it, I'm calling the repairman. Is Cheech here? Nope. Damn it! Between you and me, you don't really like Cheech much, do ya? What are you talking about? He's great! I mean, he's all right. He means well. Actually, he does it, but he's my uncle! What do you want? But if he wasn't around no more, we'd be okay, right? Maybe you would, but who the hell would I hang out with? What, did you kill him? How'd you do it? Me and Ma have a bet. <laughs> Holy crap! I was kidding around! You did kill him! Jesus Christ, Gina! I didn't touch him! I haven't seen him since last night! <laughs> it's all my fault! 
Kid, relax. I saw him an hour ago. He went to them Nerd Olympics with Teresa. Why do you think he was dead? I'll tell you on the way. Come on. And I wasn't crying. What do you mean you can't get here for two days? It's so cold, I can see Cheech's breath. I thought Comic-Con was gonna be a comedy show for convicts, you know? Where every punchline is, don't drop the soap. <laughs> you know who should be in prison? Bentley with a moon. He almost was, three times, but he always got off. It's ironic, nothing sticks to Maple Man. Why are you sticking up for him? The guy's a pig. He's not a pig. He's the product of the forbidden love between man and maple tree. You just can't see the real him past your nerd boner. By the way, you should wear a jock under that costume. Man, I ain't seen so much butt crack since we extorted the plumber's union. Maybe there was something else you did wrong? He fired me because I wouldn't put out. What? Guy sounds like a creep. No respect for the ladies. Yo, space jugs. Let's see if I can come in peace. Cookie, shame on you for even thinking of calling a repairman when you have me. A housewife alone? A repairman? Oh, that reminds me of a dirty movie I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? Strange. Ah, there's nothing like using your hands to bring back the heat. Good thing I brought my big tool. That was a line in the movie. <gasps> Did you ever repair it? I don't know what you're referring to, Cookie. I'm just here to perform some sweaty, dirty work. That's another line! Ah, you're the Randy Repairman! Damn my gambling days. I knew that video would come back to haunt me. Sir, can I see your wristband? <laughs> How is this the first I'm hearing about Gambini's kid? What, I gotta tell you every little thing? You do when our lives are at stake. What if he squealed on us to the mob? Then we'd be having this conversation in hell. The day Cheech gets taken out by a six-year-old, I'll eat my shirt. Well, get ready to choke down some polyester, because this kid's the real deal. Got a little crush there, kid? Yeah. I mean, no! Shut up, dumbass! All right, to be continued. Now, let's find Cheech quick before we wind up relocated to Yellow Horse or White Knife or some f***ing place. <gasps> God, you can almost smell the virginity in here. Hello? I'm down here. How you doing? I'm Gina's friend. That's funny, because Gina doesn't have any friends. Oh, you calling me a liar, Gina's mom? Nobody calls me a liar. Where do you get off? What, did somebody drop a deuce in your cereal this morning? Get dried up old floozy? Oh, yeah, okay, now it makes sense. Come on in and wait for her. So, what's a guy gotta do to get some milk and cookies around here? Oh, you're a hungry little spark plug, ain't ya? <laughs> yeah, hungry for revenge. <laughs> Good one. Hello? Cookie? Nice to finally meet you, Cheech. You're bigger than I imagined. Has everyone seen my movie? Who wants cookies? Hey, where'd you go? Ah! Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> hey, you're not Cheech. No shit, you little monster. Oh, Jesus, McCool! Oh. Oh. Where did it go? Where did it go? It's gone. <gasps> hold me, Randy. Tighter. Cookie, get a hold of yourself. Who was that crazed demon child? It was Gina's friend. Oh, that explains a lot. But why was he have to cheech? I don't know. Let's go down to the comic book convention and ask him. A comic book convention? And I get to kill Cheech? Double win! Gah! Jeez, I hope Pop's having better luck finding Cheech than I am. <laughs> Oh, Gina! That's for locking me in my locker. Thanks for the snacks, though. Hey, can I ask you something? Say you do off Uncle Cheech. What next? Oh, I got plans. I want you and me to run away together. Hit the open road like Bonnie and Clyde. You want to get gunned down in slow motion at the end of an old movie? No, I mean the bank robbing parts. But none of the kissy parts. Ew, you're gross. 
Maybe the Huggy Pots. Don't get your hopes up, sicko. But look, do you really gotta kill my uncle? Of course I do! Good luck finding Cheech in this joint. The man's a master of disguise and concealment. He could be standing right behind me and you'd never know. Yo, it. Gina, spot your Uncle Cheech a couple of bucks for a slice, will you? Damn it! I've been looking for you, mister. Not another one. Look, Junior, I know what you're thinking, but I ain't your father. Holy crap, you're even dumber than the legends. Time to put you out of my misery. Yo, look, everybody! It's a midget from Game of Thrones! <laughs> Never look as tall in person. But this is official police business. Let me in. Not until I see a wristband, sir. Can we wrap this up soon, sugar cheeks? Oh, I'm getting right as cramp. Oh! What's the meaning of this, you me wannabe? In season one, episode four of the Adventures of Maple Man, you vow to stand against injustice, no matter where it occurred even if the hour was late and the location less than convenient. If you want to quote the show to me, that's an extra $60. Silence! Maple Man stands for fairness, equality, and decency. You stand for none of those things, you egocentric, misogynist hypocrite! How dare you! How dare you, sir! You have no right to fill the sacred Maple Man unitard. Security? Sure, hide behind your goons. Oh, hi, Jetsy. Ah! Maple Man, thank God you're here. I fell through this table. Uh, would Cheech McDougal please proceed to the information desk? That's the big table near the front door. If you get confused, tell a grown-up you're lost. Uh, over and out. Well, if it ain't Jimmy Falcone. Oh, come on! Look at you, excuse me! Cheech McDougal, do not come to the information desk! Repeat, do not make up your mind! Gee, kid, you got the same psychotic spark in your eye as your old man. I also got his propensity for violent blood-soaked revenge. And his inability to whistle. Kid, look, I owe you a huge apology. I'm sorry for what happened with your pops. He was a, well, I won't say a good man. He was a man. Let's leave it at that. You call that half-assed tap dance an apology? You murderized him. He was gonna kill my uncle, then I would have had to kill him back, so we skipped his step. But don't take it out on Cheech. I'm the guy you want. Don't worry. I promised Gina I'd never touch you. Who's worried? But that's nice. She's a good kid. Oh, she's great. Easy there, Romeo. But listen, you kind of already got your revenge on me. How do you figure? Look at me. Look around you. I'm living like a schmuck here. I mean, my life ain't bad, but it's a far fucking cry from good. Know what I mean? Oh, for Christ's sake. For the last time, kid. I never been your mother. <sighs> Let me tell you something, you ignominious little snot stain. I am a classically trained actor. If it weren't for all the money I make and during these weekends with you halitosis-ridden cretins, I'd never be caught dead in this asinine outfit providing masturbatory fantasy fodder for overgrown adolescent twerps. And furthermore, I hate Canada and Maple Man can gobble my knob! <gasps> Did you get that, Teresa? He's a one-take wonder. And... post! I hate Canada, and Maple Man can gobble my knob! You look fat in that suit. Oh. Teresa! That's not nice. What? Bitch took my job. I told you I wouldn't make this easy for you, so you're gonna have to go through me. You know, for a guy you can't stand, you sure do seem to care a lot about Cheech. Trust me, this is killing me. I'm gonna regret it the next time he opens his mouth. Wait a sec. Does your mother do hoop waxes down at the Korean spa? See what I mean? <sighs> All right. I changed my mind about off and Cheech, but not about... What? That sounds mushy. So, spit it out. Nah, some things are better left unsaid. What are you, chicken? Shut up! 
I'm no chicken. You're a chicken. Yeah, yeah. I'm rubber, you're glue. Just shut the f up and tell me. <sighs> I didn't change my mind about how much I like you. Um, I'm glad about that. And being glad hurts my face. You make my face hurt too, Gina. So, what do you say you and me shake down a couple of these booths? Why not? These dorks have been bullied all their lives. They know the drill. Hey! <gasps> You're under arrest for assaulting a police officer, young man. It's maximum security juvie for you. It'll be no picnic, my fine friend. Lights out by 10 and only four hours of social media per day. McCool, wait! Aww. Aww. Guess I'll have to take a rain check. Guess so. But those blowjob screws won't keep me down for long. You gonna wait for me? <laughs> Screw that. That's my gal. Well, son, I hope you picked up some comics to read where you're going. For Canada! A dumping ground for American culture since 1867! I knew it! There is a more north! Yes, Jimmy, and this is where we'll be until I'm certain the elusive Carmine Gambini is no longer a threat. How soon did he give you the slip? Somewhere between the washrooms and the parking lot. That's my boy. Petey, did you see how many hits our Maple Man video got? Yeah, but look what they're calling it. Idiot fan pwned by Maple Man. I can't take this no more. I'm walking home. I'll just head south. How hard can it be? Which way is south? We're so far north, it's all friggin' south! Oh, God! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, friends and potential bullies. Before Pop bravely tattled on the mob, there was a time when he had to go what wise fellas and good guys refer to as straight. <laughs> Why are you crying? I just got this hard-ass parole officer who's <laughs> making me get a regular job. <laughs> That's for getting pinched in the first place. Once Pop's shattered testes healed, he was well on his way to rehabilitation. Give me two abortions in a basket, double tap and bloody rye toast. Coming right up. First National's got a payroll coming in. You know what to do. Oh. I'm confused, Pop. I understand why you work here, but why does Cheech? The guy likes eggs. What do you want from me? Okay, but Uncle Aldo also works here, and Uncle Sammy, Tootie Marcone, and isn't that Don Gambini delivering milk? Petey, shut up. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were still running your organization under the very nose of the New York parole system. Kid, I'm on the straight and narrow. Just trust me, will ya? You once said that trust me was gangster talk for fuck you. Oh, if my suspicions prove true, I will be very disappointed, Pop. Very disappointed. Thanks for waiting till my kid left. All right, hands up! This is a bust! I had to do another 18 months because of your big mouth. Now that we live in Regina, Pop works a legitimate job every day, and I've never been prouder of him. <laughs> That's for being a rat, which reminds me. <laughs> if you think I'm ever going to forgive you for that, forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! Petey! I know what's going on in there, and it sure ain't clean! Your son's in there, pile driving his crotch into a coma. Bust the door down! Why would you want to see that? Oh. oh, my God! Pull him up! He must have fainted from shame. <laughs> what the hell? Between you and me, jerk Cousteau, that is not how you masturbate. So what the heck is an Ocean Lab 6? It's a three-month undersea education program I was accepted to, but it's prohibitively expensive. I was underwater so no one would see my tears. When it comes to my kids, there's no such thing as prohibitionally expensive. How much we talking? Whoa, yeah, that ain't happening. I've never had to say this in my life, but I can't afford that. 
Nice going. Now your father's drowning his sorrows in hot sauce, you selfish little prick. Leave him alone. It's not his fault I'm a worker day schmuck who can't afford underwater nerd school. <sighs> On top of that, I went and ruined my breakfast. I can help with one of them problems. I used to make this for Don Gambini. The man was a notorious overspicer. He'd cover his cannelloni in pepper flakes, and then he'd piss and moan about how hot it was. And when he pissed and moaned, chefs lost their thumbs. Holy crap, these taste like eggs again. The spice is gone. Like I said behind the Don's back, you're welcome, you whiny bitch. I think you got the solution to your money problem right there. Cookie's right. We could use this to extort every Indian restaurant in town. Pay up, or the Vindaloo gets it. Haven't you idiots figured out there's legal ways to make a buck? Course not. Luckily, I have. Now, let's go take the spice out of life. I thought your family could afford Ocean Lab. Teresa's always got so much expensive clothes and jewelry. She gets those from men I'm not supposed to tell my parents about. My family's taking me camping this weekend to cheer me up. Hey, do you want to come along? Maybe we could comfort each other in our time of mutual disappointment? I literally have no experience in this area, so I'm just gonna ask, are you coming on to me? <laughs> no, silly. Why would I do that? What are you even talking about? Yes. Well then, I'd love to go camping. In fact, I've already pitched my tent. <laughs> Welcome to Scorpion's Hive, the publicly funded show that provides investment opportunities for private venture capitalists. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? Oh no, I overspiced my food. It's burning a hole in my tongue. Jimmy, you're supposed to be at work. Agnes, get back to the office, quick. What if someone needs a map? Hey lady, them spices hot enough? For yous? My name is Neutralizer, and I'm here to say I'm gonna take all the spice from your spices away. Spice it, yeah. Spice it down. Oh, God, stop it. <laughs> Ming's right. Just tell us about the product so we can rip your new one. It's Spice Neutralizer. You sprinkle it on overly spicy food, and it kills the heat but not the taste. Who's your target market? Munja cake white people who can't handle a little pepper. What are your sayers, Figa? Hey, wasn't I married to you once? You look terrible, Cheech. Oh, glad I walk out on you, you bad man. What's your business plan? To make a crap ton of money and send my kid to space. I import knockoff yoga pants, Belgium video game, and spices. I'm out, bad idea. As an Irish Canadian, I wasn't even aware food could be spicy. I'm out. I like this idea, but I don't want to invest in it. I prefer to license it from you. What's that mean? It means I do all the work, assume all the risk, pay you half the profits, and you do nothing. You've always wanted to do nothing, Jimmy. Hold out for less than nothing. Are you serious, Pop? You got the money? Yep. Looks like you are gonna be sleeping with the fishes. I know you didn't mean that the usual way, but I still peed my pants a little. What am I gonna tell Anna? She invited me camping so we could forget our Ocean Lab disappointment. Could you just enjoy something for once? What she don't know won't hurt her. Howdy, sir. I'm Ron, Anna's dad. This is my wife Bathsheba. I hope you're up for a rollicking kick in the pants adventure in the wilds of Saskatchewan, Petey. <laughs> And don't worry, I'll see there's no hanky or panky between these kids. We'll keep things as chaste and pure as our Lord Jesus. I'd say have fun, but that's clearly off the table. Bathsheba, stop staring at the man like a harlot. Okay, let's hit the road. Thanks for coming, Petey. I need at least eight inches between you two back here. Move your keister over, son. Let's pass the time with music. Oh, we're going to the mansion on the Happy Day Express. And the letters on the engine are J-E-S-U-S. <laughs> what do you mean you lost the spice neutralizer recipe? Wheatin's gonna be here any minute. Just write it down again. I would, but I can't remember it. 
I only got so much room up here. I can't rememberize the whole recipe and the names of all the hobbits. Ah, crap, that's wheat then. Maybe it's in my other pants. You don't have other pants. Okay, okay. I'll scratch other pants off the list. But that is a lot of zeros. Let's count them again. One. Two. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were stalling me for some reason. He's on to us. Forget it! Okay, look. Cheech lost the formula. We'll find it. We just need time. But I've already bought factories and hired sweatshop workers. Spice Neutralizer launches next week. I'm having several Spice Girls neutralized to mark the occasion. Touch Ginger and I'll cut ya! You have till Monday to produce that formula. Otherwise, I'll have to sue you for misrepresentation. Sorry, Jimmy. It's nothing personal, just business. You can't say that! That's my people saying! How does he do that? Cheech, if you don't remember that formula, Wheat Thin's gonna take us for everything we got. I got this, Jimmy. Trust me. Do you mean trust me, trust me, or f you trust me? The nice one. Cheech didn't lose it. Someone stole it. And I bet it was that Ming broad from Scorpion's Hive. That's classy. Blame the Asian. It's got nothing to do with being Asian. And everything to do with being Cheech's ex-wife. How much more motive does she need? She's right. You know what they say. Hell hath no flurry like a woman's corns. Are we still in Canada? I don't see this campground anywhere on the map. If you're not on the map, the government can't find you and forcibly re-educate you with the lies of the Antichrist. I see. I'm just gonna retire to my tent for the rest of the weekend. Oh, we don't use tents. We're sleeping in old Archie Bunker here. Do me a favor, son. Take that bag of automatic weapons from the roof rack inside. <laughs> you don't mind if I call you son, do you? We're facing Armageddon together. That makes us family. Uh, what? I'll go set up a perimeter. Oh, darn, I forgot the razor wire. Oh, well, we'll have to rely on prayers and homemade frag mines to keep Satan away. Anna, I'm trying very hard not to freak out, but have I been kidnapped? Sorry. <laughs> Every few months, Mom and Dad drag me out here to wait for the end times. I couldn't face another rapture fail without someone rational to talk to. So you picked me? Oh, that's just great. <gasps> wait. You think I'm rational? That's the hottest thing a girl's ever said to me. Petey, you're downright logical. Ah. And don't worry about my family. They're nutty, but harmless. Petey, the Bible says it's an abomination for a man to lie with another man, so you can't sleep with me in the men's quarters. <laughs> Thankfully, it says nothing about black market assault rifles. <laughs> anyway, you'll be bunking with Anna. What a friend we have! In Jesus! All right, me and Jimmy will muscle that formula away from Ming. You gals go home and sync up your cycles. We're not sending two goons in to intimidate a small boned lady. It needs a woman's touch. Give me the formula, Toots, or I'll rip your freaking lips off. Jesus, Ma! What the hell, big crazy bitch, talking about? I'm talking Russian roulette with an automatic, unless you start singing. Oh, Ma, where the hell you been all my life? The formula's gotta be stashed around here someplace. She comes from a very crafty culture. Isn't that a little racist, Cheech? Talk to me when you've spent three weeks in a Chinese finger trap. Oh, God, that's strong. I feel like I've been maced. Nah, mace feels worse than this. See? Ow! Damn it, Cheech! What the hell is wrong with you? I'm trying to illustrate a point. Ow! Daddy! <laughs> oh, my eyes! Still not as bad as mace, but... Oh! Finish up those K-rations, kids. They'll keep for 600 years, but they do get stale. How's that filtered urine, Petey? <laughs> ha! Someone just volunteered for first watch tonight. Petey, if anyone tries to get in, shoot first and beg the Lord's forgiveness later. <laughs> That's a joke. You won't need forgiveness for slaughtering whatever unholy abomination comes knocking. Oops, forgot the urine filter. I know this isn't what you expected, Petey. 
But once Mom and Dad go to sleep, maybe we can... Have a fumbling session of heavy commiserating about Ocean Lab? Very heavy. And very fumbling. Oh, God, you talk so sexy. Oh, there's plenty more inexperienced innuendo where that came from. Oh, no! You shot the urine filter! <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, O'Shea did it. That leprechaun always whines about not making enough money from the TV show. All right, thanks, Ming. Sorry I pointed a gun at your head. Oh, that's nothing compared to Canadian immigration. Oh! Oh! Teresa did it! That's just great. Now she's suing us, too. Way to go, Cheech. How is this in any way my fault? Going on that crazy TV show was Cookie's idea. Don't blame me, you sack of shit. Guys, guys, calm down. We all know this is Petey's fault. No, it's Ma and Pops for having a brainiac for a son. Yeah, if he was a moron like the rest of us, this would have never happened. I screw you guys. I'm going to go talk to O'Shea myself. Unlike you idiots, I know how to get things done. You're supposed to blow up the other guy's cars to get things done. I'm telling you, Mokul, O'Shea's behind this. Are you suggesting the Premier is embroiled in some sort of spice neutralizer conspiracy? That's preposterous. So you're not going to help us? Au contraire, Jimmy. I'll see this through to the end. My first step, spending nine hours on hold with your government-sponsored insurance company. For Canada, where no-fault liability means everyone gets screwed equally. The jig's up, O'Shea. We know about your problems with Scorpion's Hive. How'd you find out? Let's just say... Ming told us. She knows? After she swore I didn't talk in my sleep? You slept with my wife? Ah, we only cuddled. <gasps> with me penis in her. Son of a bitch! Who gives a sh? You were married three days! I've only had this shirt three days. I still don't want him sticking his dick in it. Now give us what we want, O'Shea. Security, get in here. I've got some trash to take out. Oh, right, I'll crack a window. There's something I should tell you. My pop got enough money together to send me to Ocean Lab. <gasps> I thought we were sharing our mutual sorrows. But you were just practicing holding your breath. It's not like that, Anna. I just didn't know how to tell you. Dad warned me about privileged rich boys who try to take advantage of innocent girls. Try? No. Did? Yes. <laughs> but I like you, Anna. Yay! It's finally the apocalypse! That or it's a roving band of liberals seeking to feast on our Bibles and unborn babies. Don't be afraid to kill anyone, Petey. The Bible says it's okay more often than not. Play the numbers, son. Always play the numbers. You were right, Dad. Oh, Lord, forgive me for not kissing this heretic. <laughs> Wake up! Uh, I thought I told you girls to stay home. Aren't you glad we don't listen to you very often? Teresa followed O'Shea. He's meeting with Boyas. Come on! Whoa! One more step and I get a free coffee. Everything's coming up, Cheech. I'll have to see the money before I can commit to anything, you cheap, sleazy bastards. Oh, that's where my flashlight went. Not so fast, O'Shea. You're too late, you jackasses. It's done. You can't sell stolen property. <laughs> oh, God, listen to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> and violence never sold anything. <laughs> this is getting weird. The deal's off. 
Now look what you did. You blew me chances. Screw you, O'Shea. That spice neutralizer recipe belongs to us. What the hell are you talking about, you giant bloody festering tit? I was about to sign a deal with a rival network for me own investment show. Piranha Creek. I thought you was trying to extort me. For what? If Scorpion's Hive found out about Piranha Creek before I jump ship, they'd gnaw the flesh off the deal's meaty bones. Wait, which one of you is the piranha? It's Canadian television, Jimmy. We all are. Oh, Christ. Now I'm stuck on that low-paying show. Hey, would you look at that? <laughs> look at that indeed. Tabby's mom is looking pretty fine. How do you like that, Petey? The Gupta family here was under the impression the age of Kali Yuga was ending. That's the Hindu apocalypse. Between you and me, these kooks put the mental in fundamental. Everyone knows the end of times is a Christian Armageddon. Sorry about the gunshot wound, Mr. Gupta. That's the thing with timeshare apocalypse bunkers. <laughs> They're affordable, but the scheduling's a pain in the rump. <laughs> I'll go take down the perimeter. I'm glad no one stepped on a frag mine. That could have been very messy. <laughs> Lucky I'm good at digging mass graves. Please, God, tell me that was a joke. It won't be one day. Anna, listen, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about Ocean Lab. And I'm sorry I called you a heretic. So, will I see you at school? No. Mom saw us making out, and now she wants to send me away until the baby comes. What? I know. But guess where they're sending me? I'm okay! A mine went off! Arm seems to be gone! If I pass out before we reach the hospital, be sure to refuse a transfusion! <laughs> Going somewhere, Toby? <laughs> You've come for vengeance! Make it quick! Not the face! Open casket! Who's gonna rub mother's feet? Calm down! Pull yourself together! Thank you, Jimmy. I deserve that. A and probably that, too. Now you're just doing it for fun. Stop it, Jimmy. It's my time. Ow! You Ow! stole my yeah. formula, didn't you? Yes, at the TV studio. I knew Jimmy would quit Regina Tourism once he got rich. <laughs> I couldn't face work without my best friend in the whole wide world. <laughs> Who? Me? But I had a change of heart and left the recipe in your car. Mom insisted on coming with me. It was too late to put out the fire, so I grabbed Mom, stopped, dropped, and rolled her, and we took off. But you saved the recipe, right? No, it went up with your car. Ah, great, I'm screwed. Thanks a lot, you stupid son of a bitch. Lucky it's easy to remember. Baking soda, flour, vanilla extract, and... A dash of cumin. I don't know why that was so hard to remember, Cheech. Oh, yeah? Go on, ask me. Which one's Frodo? I have your brand new SUV courtesy of Saskatchewan Government Insurance. <gasps> Canada's worst driver. I must have left it in gear. Put on a pot of coffee, Cookie. I'm going back on hold. Yo, Cook, I got Petey on Skype. I hate it here. I've been seasick for three weeks. Don't worry, Mr. and Mrs. McDougal. I'll take care of him. I hope you kids are being good down there under the sea. Well, Mrs. McDougal, I won't lie to you. Ah, getting screwed in a submarine. It's like he's in the Navy for real. How you doing? In the old life, the trickiest part of pulling off a big heist was dividing up the loot. So many fingers, so little pie. Seems a shame to give all this money away, considering these guys already skimmed it behind my back. So I want you to put a little surprise in the boxes. Jimmy, you are a no-good, backstabbing scumbag who'd sell out his own mother to turn a buck. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Ah, Cheech, you always know what to say. Thanks, pal. You put the cash in with the bums, didn't you? Was I not supposed to? Oh! Oh, I get it now! 
Come here, you. I can't stay mad at you. That ain't what happened. You went to town on me with a baseball bat. So? You deserved it. I still got Louisville Slugger imprinted on my ass. You know what you are? A brutal, bloodthirsty hood who'd beat up his own mother for crossing him. <sighs> ah, you always know what to say, Cheech. Come here, you. No way, Jimmy. You ain't messing up this hair again. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. I know you're trying to save money, but if you fall off of there, I'm not spending the rest of my life changing your diapers. Cook, I didn't rise to the top of organized crime being scared of heights. I wish you were. You wouldn't have chucked Gambini out of that skyscraper and someone else would be fixing that roof. <clears throat> <sighs> I gotta go get ready for jazzercise. <laughs> they still do jazzercise in Regina. So, since when do you wear diapers? Are you done yet? I'm bored over here. What are you doing? Who's holding my safety line? I tied it off. What am I, a mook? See you later, boys. Salut, mon ami. Holy crap. God is French. I owe Schwashwa 20 bucks. believe they're forcing me to be on the stupid debate team. Next time, think before skipping class to drive a friend to an abortion. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> a friend. Madam Chairperson, judges, esteemed yet poorly prepared opponents from the Catholic school. Shut up! Jesus totally rode a dinosaur. I have crafted a tight rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I get it. Tight rebuttal. Very mature. <laughs> uh, let me begin by saying... <sighs> Pass. Do you wanna... Oh, no, thank you! Ew! Even your sweat tastes like failure. Baby, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you were tied to the car. Cancel the bulk diaper order. Hello, I'm Jack. Glad you're okay. Hey, Jack. Jimmy. See this TV he's got? It's like you're right there with the wiggles. Ho! Oh, speaking of wiggles. This is my wife, Jeanette. Do you mind my asking, but were you ever a dancer? Me oui. But uh, not with the clothes on, eh? I knew it! A sister stripper. Give me five. Up top. <laughs> Want to help me put up my stripper pole? Yo, Cheech, quit staring at her ass. Why don't you take a picture? <laughs> I like this guy already. Well, we don't got no more Labats. Where does a guy get the beer in vagina? I know it's Regina, but vagina make me laugh. Trust me, that joke gets old quick. <laughs> So, Jacques, where's that accent you got from? France? Uh, no, I'm from the place with the, the man's skirt and the, how you say, the, the oh, squeeze bag of music. Scotland? Oui, c'est ça, I'm from the Scotland. I think main skirts are Greenwich Village. What's your last name? It's Boucher, uh, I mean, uh, McFelcher. I already told you once, bud, feet off the table. Okay, but first you kiss my hairy ass. <laughs> You believe this, Cheech? A bar fight! It's like I'm 12 again! I know Botox helps excessive perspiration, but why do you care? If I gotta be on a team full of losers, I want it to be a winner. You're our only hope! Doc, fill these pits with everything you got! 
Ew! Now his face is leaking. I got this one. Everyone at headquarters had a good laugh when they heard I had to bail you out of jail yet again, Jimmy. Did anyone mention me? We didn't start it. We just joined in when it got going. Oh, of course. You didn't do it, just like the last time and the time before that. There will come a day, Jimmy, that I won't be there to catch you when you take yet another of your enthusiastic leaps from grace. Oh, you'll be there, Bakul. You got no friends, no life. You got nothing. <laughs> He's right. Don't you think it's funny how we got so much in common? Almost too much, if you know what I mean? He means your wives are both hot-looking broads. Ho, ho, ho! Sound like somebody want to crack at Jeanette, no? Well, you're a big man, and I've seen you fight, so uh, <laughs> I'll pass. But I may rub one out to her at some point, if that's okay with you. You honor me with your future masturbation. <gasps> Still rocking the dress, Rads McCool? You look like a giant apple with legs, man. David Suzuki's wispy beard, Slade Donovan. <laughs> Lanny McDonald's magnificent mustache! That's right. What are you doing here? You need something. What I'm doing here is above your pay grade. What I need is for you to do your damn job, Dudley Do Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Jacques, I told you not to associate with these people. Man, what the hell is going on? Cheech tried to hug the Wiggles, and he knocked over the TV. I need a new one, Mountie. Yeah, get us a new TV, Mountie. Wait a sec, why do you have a Mountie? Why do you have a Mountie? <gasps> Witness, Witness protection! protection! <laughs> <laughs> I was a biker in Quebec who ratted out my own drug suppliers. I was a capo in the mafia who killed my own boss. I knew you McDougal boys had that dirty rat deep inside you. Actually, mine's a hamster. Say goodbye, Jimmy. Protected witnesses are forbidden to fraternize. Jacques! Jimmy! Jacques' hot wife! Why am I under house arrest? Jacques's the one who started the bar fight. Ah, jeez, I just can't stop ratting on people. And I cannot have you making me look the fool in front of my fellow officer. Until Jacques testifies, Slade wants you to stay indoors and be a good boy. What am I, a puppy? Metaphorically, yes. So don't make me rub your nose in it whilst hitting you with a rolled up newspaper, which I would never do in reality, as cruelty to animals is most un-Canadian. Unless you're an Inuit seal hunter, then it's a matter of survival. But I like hanging out with Jacques. He's the first cool friend I've made here in Vagina. <laughs> yeah, okay. Still kind of funny. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but there's to be no more playdates with your degenerate Quebecois bestie. For Canada, where uneven population density makes it hard to meet new people! Ernest Hemingway once said, this shotgun tastes like... Thank you. I never understand what's going on at these talk fights, but we won, right? Somehow, even though I pulled that argument out of my butt, they don't seem to care what I say. Your face is doing all the work for you. That's ridiculous. People aren't that shallow. Sorry. I just kind of got lost in your eyes. <sighs> Teresa, snap out of it! Okay, if you insist. Insist! I meant insist! Um, ew?
Are you wearing a safety line? Because those things are dangerous. I need a favor, Jimmy. Can you help old Jack? I don't know. If McCool finds out, he might take away my TV privileges. I need you to hide this for moi. Just until Slade stop being such a, how you say, a ball squeezer. You mean ball buster. Not when Slade do it. Better I don't say what it is. We keep this entre nous, no? I don't know what under Nuno means, but you better be careful. You don't want to get kicked out of the program. Ah, who give a shit, eh? <laughs> oh, you just did. Mm, something smells fun. What do you suppose it is? What? My crime doll was tingling. <gasps> Bolivian marching powder? Let me just say. I am so glad you're back in business, Pop. I never really lost faith in you. It ain't mine, Gina. So you stole it? Even better! Sorry, kid. Ah, you rat bumstead stool chicken sucker butt. Damn it! I'm so mad I can't even curse right! <laughs> I can't have this garbage in my house. We gotta give it back. After we have a taste. No, you dumbass. If McCool catches us with it, he's liable to send us right back to New York. And the downside to that is? What's Jack doing at a rail yard? Fingers crossed he's getting another shipment of sweet mama yayo. Get ready to hand this off to him. What seems to be the problem? Officer... I hope you have a good explanation for being out of the house and following McFelcher around. Mother courage, I feel great! Do you ever feel just great, Jimmy? Yeah! I want to order a bunch of Chinese food and just stare at it. Egg rolls! Egg rolls! We should drive to the coast! And fast, right? Really goddamn fast! I swear, I could bench press this SUV. You want to see me do it? I will effing do it right now! Watch me! <laughs> Oh, hey, Slay, just wailing on my packs. The devil's dangerous. This is a new low even for you, straight McFool. Shut up, spot me, count my reps. Better yet, come at me, bro. The dog patrol had a debate tonight. Oh, right. Sorry. I was getting a handy from the convertible chick. You don't even know her name? Don't need to. I'm good looking. Thank you, Botox. There's more to life than being good looking, Petey. And as much as that isn't true, this isn't you. For once, people are judging me not for who I am, but for how I look. And it feels great. Now, excuse me, I need to go buy a crap ton of body spray. I'm telling you, McCool, those were Jacques narcotics. Oh, balded ass Jimmy, I see what's going on. You're jealous of McFelcher's freedoms. No, I ain't. The guy's about to get himself kicked out of witness protection. Funny, because that's exactly what you're doing. Now, where's Cheech? I cleaned the car. I got into all the cracks and crevices with a straw. It's spotless now. Jimmy, it's spotless. Cheech, I have no choice but to put this on you. No! You can't make me a robot! Cheech! Stop I it! I don't want to! Stop! He's uncomfortable! Hold still! That is not funny! Stop it! Hold still right now! Stop it! Oh, you guys are dicks. Jimmy, you are the biggest badass! <laughs> you don't just do the coke, you make the arresting officer do it too! I love you guys! Jack, level with me. You're up to something, ain't you? No, my friend. Then what were you doing at the train yard? Did you join the circus? Tell me you joined the circus. All right, I tell you. I got a thing for the train. <laughs> By the way, Jimmy, I go now. You believe that? He dodged my question like you dodged a subpoena. He's planning a heist. Before we do anything, can we get some more Peruvian disco sugar? Doesn't anybody just say cocaine, for Christ's sake? Uh, I got the wobblies real bad, and, uh, I'm starting to hallucinate. Ain't that right, Lonnie? Who are you talking to? All right. You want to know what he might be heisting from that yard? A lot of stuff comes through there. Let me check the manifest. Wheat, wood chips, 
Eh, something called dildos from PEI. It's so obvious. Everyone needs dildos. Cheech, grab yourself a methadone from the mini fridge and shut up! Thanks, kid. Methadone? That's Sonny D. Fuck does he know. All right, what else we got? Coal, lumber, potatoes. Hey, wait a sec. Maple syrup? Why would he steal that? It's three bucks a bottle. Now that's that knockoff crap Ma buys. This is the grade A stuff they only tap once a year. The kid's right. Back in the day, the old Amber Princess was tearing New York apart. The five families walked away. Let the Frenchies have the whole sticky mess. Get going. That train hits Regina any minute now. And I get points on whatever you steal off of Pepe Le Puke. Gina, we're not stealing from him. We're stopping him for his own good. For his own good? What happened to you, man? You used to be beautiful. I have no father. How did I get an A-plus on this? I skipped class on test day. I know. Now, what say we pretend you're 18, stud saws? If I could move my face, I'd look very interested. Okay, if Petey's not gonna show, one of us has to go up. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Teresa McDougal. Thanks for coming out tonight. <gasps> okay, debating. Um, I think the other team's points are all lame, and they dress like dorks, and I don't know what is going on with that one chick's hair. I got this one, sis. Oh, thank God. I was running out of argumentations. What made you come back? My teacher just touched me inappropriately. <gasps> Petey, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, it was great. But I realized I can't be the kind of person who cruises on looks alone. But the touching? Top notch. Oh, God, I wish I had your pores. Oh, what did you say? My point exactly. Now, what's the topic? What's the topic? I'll begin by quoting Aristotle. Where was I? Oh, yes. <laughs> Aristotle once said, <gasps> sorry, I'll start again. <gasps> Aristotle once said, <gasps> ah, It's like I opened the Ark of the Covenant. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. See, kids, that's what happens to fornicators. for pancake topping. Because $10 million in maple syrup is a lot sweeter deal, mon ami. $10 million? Jeez, I throw away one of my kids for that. Metaphysically speaking, of course. Hey, how about I give you 10% for helping me? After all, you and Cheech's clowning around took the heat off of me, Mokshum. 10%? Okay, make it 15. Deal. Okay, all right. Let's stop <laughs> shoveling coal on this diesel train and shake on it. What's that? Ah, crap. You were right, Jimmy! McBelcher was up to something! How the hell did he find us? He's a really good cop. Your ankle monitor! The one I put on your ankle to monitor you with? It led me right to you! Okay, I'll settle for 5%. <laughs> I guess I blew the debate. How badly did we lose? We won! Jetsy totally 
really stepped up. Boy, can he talk. It was like watching a master at work. And his Dutch accent, so sexy. Sorry I was such a jerk. Well, good-looking people always get a free pass. So, we're cool? No, I said good-looking, you're hideous. Hey, Jetsy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like your witness was planning a caper right under your nose, Slade. What is this, Scooby-Doo? Shut up, man! Jock, listen, I just wanted to stop you because I like having you around. Can you forgive me? No, Jimmy. Vat fair food. What's that mean? Go fuck yourself. Sounds so pretty in French. Well, Jimmy, you put yourself at great personal risk to prevent a maple syrup drought in Western Canada. Uh, no. That's not exactly what I was... That's our story, Jimmy, and we're bloody well sticking to it. Gotcha. Hey, where's Cheech? Ah, finally, getting the help I need. Your move, Lonnie. Yep, I'm gonna make a full recovery. Hey, that's my king, you son of a bitch. <coughs> right there is why you should never touch drugs. You're right, baby. Now, let's get hammered on maple syrup and vodka. How you doing? Who am I? None of your business. What's it to you? You're writing a book? That's how I'd be talking if I was still in the mob. The ancient Italian code of silence known as Omerta required us to keep our mouths shut. It all started back in Sicily, where the mob made an example of anyone who opened their mouth. Like this guy. All he did was ask a cop for directions. After that, no one ever talked to the cops. In fact, no one ever talked to anyone just to be on the safe side. Even if my great grandpa's <gasps> pants were on fire, he still would have kept his mouth shut. Hell of a guy. The whole village grinded to a halt. They had to come up with some way to communicate. Why Italians talk with their hands. Because of Omerta? I don't think that's true, Pop. Oh, yeah? Ow! You know what that means? Or did I stutter? Uh, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan Forget about it Forget about it Forget about it Oh, forget about it This corset's so tight my boobs are coming out my back why are we here? I gotta support my boss's side business, because he supports my Wednesdays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays off. Dinner where someone gets whacked. It's like I'm back home, except I'm dressed like an asshole. Oh, no! Someone shoot him, Rancher Dan! Ooh, the cavalry's here, albeit unscripted. Roll with it, everyone! Don't mind me, I'm just here to see. Buffalo, jump, Toby, you can't wear that. I can't even wear that. Jimmy, I'm afraid I have some pressing news. Great! Tell us at home! Let's go! Yeah! For Canada, where white people still think wearing these is okay! Oh, dances with horse make big I'm angry. Run many paces. Am I right, guys? Oh. All right, McCool, so what's this news? There's no easy way to say this. Oh, crap, we're moving again. Who'd you rat out this time, hop along sack of shit? I, for one, welcome a fresh start. That's because you got caught in class with a sleep boner. It's your grandmother in Sicily. No! I'm afraid she's dying. No! Oh my God, why? That woman is insane. Roll out 
the fluffy red carpet, Jesus, because there's an angel coming. Take me instead, Lord. No, take me! Take them both, God, please! I know your pain. I was absent when my own dear grandmother passed. They say she shrieked my name as the grizzly bear tore into her. <laughs> when I heard about your Nona, I resolved to bring her here for a final farewell. <laughs> Are you out of your freaking mind? I don't want to see her. I hate that bitch. She's the whole reason I had an eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. You were all so upset when I said she was dying. She's family. You gotta make a big show in case God and all the neighbors are watching. But if she finds out we ratted on the mob... Yeah, we. <laughs> don't worry. Nona's practically comatose. She'll have no idea where she is. I'm not taking that chance. We gotta be ready to make her think it's the old life. No witness protection, no cops, nothing's changed. That might be tricky. She lands in two hours. <gasps> I'm coming, Jesus! All right, one more time. <gasps> Forget it about it. What the hell's wrong with you? Sorry, I'm nervous. You heard me say it like a million times. It's here. See, what did I tell you? Shh. Jimmy. Uh, that's right, Nona. It's Jimmy. Ah! Winnipeg Jets, she's up. That means you're up, Serpico. Make it good. Forget aloud, Internet. Uh... So, Jimmy, I see you bring a the whore. Hello, Nona. End of the cry, baby. <laughs> Santa Lucia, don't feed this one after midnight. And here's the fat one. Hi, Nona. It's nice to see. <laughs> Maroon, the idiot the leaves. Evening, Nona. You're looking lovely. Okay, Nona. Good to see you. Let's get this visit over with. Hey. Wait for your cousin. What cousin? What cousin? Says the porky pig. <gasps> oh, that's nice. Apronia, come meet Dante's Inferno. You know that's your cousin, right? Technically not. I'm a McDougal. Too bad. It's way hotter if she's your cousin. Okay, let's get you home, Nona. You must be tired. Tired of your face. We no go home. I want to see Statue of Liberty. Uh, Nona, obviously we're in uh, New York, which we are, but uh, Statue of Liberty's a tall order. Why? This is a city that never sleep. I never take a bath. Oh. We go. You idiot! Apologize to Nona, like the stinking dog that you are. Hey oh, bada booba! Ha <laughs> ha! I's a real a sorry there, Nona Malona. Jesus Christ! I don't know why, but I like you. Now take me to Lady Liberty. How you doing, Paisan? I'm Cheech. <laughs> She look uh, smaller? Yeah, uh, budget cuts. Thanks a lot, Obama. We go. Ah, oh, America is so romantic. It sure is. We invented drive through wedding chapels. So, Pietro, you have a sweetheart? No, I just haven't met the right cousin. Girl, I mean girl. <laughs> El mio hero. You know that's your cousin's ass you're groping. Ah, would you stop reminding me? Houses are small. Business bad, Jimmy. No, uh, the mansion's being renovated. This is Petey's house. <laughs> is a Petey in a family business? Yeah, yeah, he's a chip off the old block. Petey, show Apollonia to a room. Don't tell 
me what to do in my own house! You believe this bitch! No, nah. I made eggplant palm just for you. You hungry? Eggplant? No, no, thought you just put cheese on a dirty sock. Uh, <laughs> this'll be your room. Huh, <laughs> plastic sheets. It's not what you think. I'm just a bedwetter. In the village, I always dream of America. Now I am here with handsome cousin, like a dream come true. If dreams came true, I'd be your handsome cousin. Oh, wait! Pietro, will you show Apollonia big banana? Banana? Well, it's kind of yellow and curves left. Oh, you mean the big apple! <laughs> I thought you meant my penis. Whoa, that's the first time I've ever said penis in front of a girl. You don't know what I'm saying, do you? Penis, 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 penis. I like you. Old hag wouldn't know good eggplant palm if it smothered her in her sleep with my favorite pillow. No, now, just because she spat it back onto her plate doesn't mean she didn't like it. Jimmy, I think if she finds out, she won't tattle. She's family. She's Sicilian! We broke Omerta, that sh runs deeper than blood. Ah! I smell the rat. <gasps> oh no, that's the whore's excuse for cooking. Where's all of your friends, Big Sheet? It's Big Shot. I know what I say. No friends to pay respect to Nola. Something not a right here. Put her in a bath, drop in a toast, about a boom, pine box back to Italy. If she's onto us, we gotta send her back right now. If we send her back, she'll know we're onto her being onto us. Gina, run a bath. I'll get the toast. Oh, eggplant parm. So, you want a way out of this? I know just the guy to talk to. Who? I said... Who's that now? You know who I mean. It's... Thank you. Ah, I said Timmy. Who's Timmy? You know, your friend there, Geronimo. Toby? That's the guy, Tony. <laughs> oh, Gina, you're gross. Still tastes better than that fucking eggplant. Your mystery dinner murder theater, Tippy. Toby, as long as it starts with a T. Shut up, Robbie. It's gotta be a New York gangster theme. Ooh, I love gangster stories. New Jack City, Boys in the Hood, The Goonies. What Goonies? I'm talking a mafia. Cheech, this is not a good idea. How dare you come into my nephew's house and disrespect me like this? I go to kitchen, I mind my business. You see, Taco, that's the kind of authenticity we're looking for. Don't you worry. Authenticity is our new middle name at the Eastside Authenticity Players. Eastside Toby, this fighting's gone on too long. We gotta bring the families together, end the bloodshed, and eat some pasta! Blood is shed, uh, macaroni, mamma mia, Abba's the best. That's insulting and kind of racist, but you got the job. Oh, Jimmy, you won't be disappointed. That's not true, but whatever. Don't moosh this up. The only thing I'll be mooshing are the Italian peas. I think I want to kill him already. That's good. Use that. <laughs> Aw, did you come running to me because you're scared of the thunder? No, I come because you scared of the thunder. Thank you. Mm, I like you. I like you too, Apollonia, but we're cousins. Cousins? It's just a word. But it's forbidden! Except in Kentucky and parts of Manitoba. What about Regina? You know we're not in New York? Yes. I no understand, but I no care. 
I'm sorry. I cannot. I know it's wrong, but it feels so right. What can we do? Ah! I get the new sheets and pajama bottoms. Hey, everybody. Look, it's Jimmy Spaghetti and the Spaghetti family. And you brought the little meatball. Ooh, she looks mad. Toby, I told you to call us the Falcone family. It's very important. I thought about it, Jimmy, but Falcone is just too on the nose. Are you kidding me? Jimmy, you're Scottish. I worked in Italy, Ceramic Tile Bazaar, for three years. I know a thing or two about the land of grout and marble. Get those cotton balls out of your mouth. You look like an idiot. But that's what Marlon Brando used in his portrayal of the... Brando's not even Italian. And for the record, neither is Bratwurst. And why is there a Mexican flag up there? <laughs> Jimmy, we're walking a tightrope here, and it's windy. Careful not to blow your cover. Which cover? That I'm a gangster or I'm not a gangster? I don't know. My mind's racing to keep up. Machu Picchu! Seriously, it's way better if you don't talk. Jimmy, this is all terrible. Nana's not gonna buy it. Oh, is that Al Pacino? I'm gonna get an autograph. Hey, Jimmy Spaghetti with the great big belly. Eat! You want more ranch dip for your pizza bagels? Look at that Larry Linguini! Who let such a snake into this gathering of honorable men? Toss him out with the rest of the garbage! Wink, wink! I hope you're enjoying the show! Of respect? Show of respect, right, Nona? I go to the ladies' room and drop, how you say, uh, cookies, eggplant, parmesan. I think she's buying it. We're gonna be okay. We're more than okay. I'm Facebook friends with Pacino! Hey, everyone! We just got married! What? <laughs> and someone killed Larry Linguini! <gasps> My baby boy's married to his freaking cousin! We have to abort. I agree. I do not want a two-headed cousin baby running around. No, Jimmy, the mission. First, we got to break up this marriage before Nona finds out and tells half of Sicily that Apollonia married Petey Falcone. By the way, Jimmy, my congratulations. A little something for the happy couple? Aw, you shouldn't have. Will you forget about that? Just go keep Nona in the bathroom. Cook, you scare some sense in Apollonia. I'll go beat the shit out of Petey. Look, I know in the old country, people marry the cousins all the time. But you don't want to be married to a pimply chronic masturbator. Plus, look at you and look at him. You're so beautiful. And he's... he's... Uh, handsome? A strong? What are you, a crackhead? The guy's a loser! What is a loser? A gavone, an idiot, a bonehead! I have to love him, but you got a choice. Ah, see, see. Oh, one second. Don't you disrespect my husband! Ow! Hey! What? Just making sure he's sharp. Hey, and a nona! The big boss says you gotta stay in the washroom, uh, cause a Larry Linguini's killer is still running around. Bada bada bingo! Such a nice boy. Shut up your face. Sulfur Mountain, that is unholy. I know you're disappointed you weren't at the ceremony, but our love just couldn't wait. I don't give a crap about your ceremony. She's your cousin! You bang him. You don't marry him. What is this, Kentucky? No, it's Regina. And guess what? My wife knows, and she doesn't care. You told her this ain't New York? Are you nuts? Oh, God, I gotta talk to Cookie. Cheech, keep Petey away from Apollonia. You can't keep us apart. We're family now. Again. Still. You know, I'm starting to like this chick. I think she really loves my boy. Welcome to the family. She was already in the family. Don't ruin this, Gina. Hey, Jimmy Spaghetti, I need a to talk to you. Not now, Toby. 
How dare you disrespect me at the wedding of your son to my daughter? What did he say? Nothing. Kiss me! Daughter, what the fuck are you talking about? The wedding threw me off. I had to improvise. Which is why we're now called the A-Side Authenticity Improvisational Players! Another domain name I have to check. Never mind the wedding! But this union will bring our families together. What the wedding? If your boy hurts a my girl, I'll kill a you, Jimmy! Please, adieu. Why you want to be married? Look at me. I'm free as a bird. I got my options open. Sky's the limit. You live alone in a basement. Never let her go. You hear me? Never let her go. And name your firstborn after me. I don't care how many heads it's got. Excuse me, everyone. I've always said there's nothing more important than family. And apparently, my son agrees with a vengeance. So, it's my honor to announce the first dance between Petey... Cookie, no! ...and his beautiful and surprisingly stabby bride, Apollonia. Oh, dear God. Let's do uh, this, Nona! Stop right there, Petey Spaghetti! You thought you fooled us with this elaborate and unscripted wedding. Well, you didn't! You murdered Larry Linguini! <gasps> ah! Apollonia no married to some monster. This family bring a shame to me. Crime, murder, but no more. No, no, calm down, please. <laughs> Cosa Nostra. No, no, stop! I'm not in the mob anymore. I ratted out my old bosses and now I'm in witness protection in Canada. <gasps> <sighs> Is it true, Jimmy? Is it true, Nona? I'm just a civilian now, a schnook. Nona, so happy. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, Jimmy see the light. Your cover's blown. I'll have you inside the Arctic Circle by morning. That's further north, isn't it? Jimmy, that's so far north, Cheech will probably bang Santa's wife. <sighs> Oh, Jimmy, quick! Jimmy McDougal, everybody! Brought to you by the Eastside Authenticity Improvisational Surprise Ending Players! Bravo! 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 Yeah! So, Nona, you're not mad? No, Jimmy. For once, I'm proud of you. But I betrayed Omerta. I no care about Omerta. It's just a big, stupid stereotype about Sicilians. Now I'm gonna go and make a nice pizza pie! <laughs> Does this mean Apollonia and I have your blessing? No! Apollonia no marry the monster! Who kill a Larry Linguini! <gasps> How you doing? You know, back in the old days you found out someone was getting whacked after it was done. You'd be all, hey, where's so-and-so? And everyone get all quiet like someone fought it. But with Cheech, I found out in advance. It was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Mm. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has got to die. But I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? What'd he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. What language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explain that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. Ah, so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. <laughs> and that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. 
Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> then Mario says, Witch head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. Why, just last week, I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring. Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Bucky, fix me three prancing mounties. <gasps> What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the prancing mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. Plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. Uh, oh, what happened last night? Where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. <laughs> Jimmy, how much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. McCool, that's nuts! You Ugh. can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> Oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream! Wait, no, this is the dream! Or is it? What does that mean? This is the end of my career! I can't call for help, what would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? <laughs> oh, lovely, that's probably work wondering where I am. So don't answer it! This is my work phone, I have to! No, you don't! <laughs> Special Agent Straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat f not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. Because I am not dealing with a giant, sweaty man-baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how'd you know? <gasps> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% mock-up is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with Mom? And why does he look like me? Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eee, talk about shame eating. 
It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 Gs for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. Atta boy, oh. McCool! Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo! Open the door! Tutty got shot in the ass. Again! Oh, crap! It's the Gambini crew! Dino, kick it in! Good day, gentlemen! Oh, yo! Where's the regular Doc? I'm his, uh... brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. Now, let's, uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. <laughs> Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your saw it and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture. What picture? I don't see any picture. There's no picture. Damn it, my ring came off. <laughs> See what you made me do, you nosy bastard! Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar of the contusion so he don't get necrotic fasciitis? I... I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so head don't get in the hole! Oh, of course! You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns, shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino, let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tootie. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me. It's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here! It's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. Tutti had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him and kill anyone he's with. And then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up. Come on, Dino. Let's go punch something. <laughs> Quit flopping around. I'm sorry to have to do this. Nice shot, McCool. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed this man to get necrotic fasciitis? Maron, look at all these drugs. Pick me! Pick me! Pick me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of you. I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? <gasps> of course! Y you're my...
my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. This is never gonna work! What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack! Okay, sorry. Where'd you find his get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up! What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron! See, this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo! You son of a bitch! <laughs> Where the hell have you been? Ah, crap, it's Marie. <laughs> remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these mooks? I bet you forgot our anniversary, didn't ya? Oh, baby, of course not. I was, uh, just talking to the doc here about your big surprise. I, uh, no, you weren't. Sure I was. I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. This better be good. Great! I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it! Oh! Smells like New York back here! Oh! So you're the one who was smoking, Teresa! You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no. I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Pop are so alike. <laughs> I can't even finish that. Maybe this needle thick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah! The guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know, it's just a starting point in my search for my- Is somebody smoking? It's Petey. I knew it. Going to Harvard, bye. Ah, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York. Somebody give him some hay or something. <gasps> Yo, Doc, what gives? Jesus H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Uh, you're killing my anniversary here. Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight. Help me out here! <gasps> what the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. Jesus, Cheech, who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. <laughs> Hell of a thoroughbred you got there, Doc. That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner, or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this. I think we can totally do this. Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this. <laughs> It's a beautiful morning at Belmont. The sun is shining, the horses are ready, and the great Canadian invasion was a false alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets, and in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. It's a good name.
The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts. Edie, come home to Mama. <laughs> Mama, no! I'll be your Mama. OK. <laughs> Peter Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father! Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus! Oh, now oh. come on! I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more... sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silver, keep still! Leo, you gotta see this! You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So, this is just a horse dancing for three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals? you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle. My brother, Paulie. The Brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard. But when he found out what Pop did for a living, Paulie ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Paulie's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Paulie again. You are definitely your father's son, mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage. No thanks. We got to retool. Maybe do out-of-town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse. Your time is up. It's gonna be horse steaks tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Fuck up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came, on the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up? Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? 
If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! Well, <laughs> Greetings, citizens. The Falcone family aren't the only ones who had an old life. Before I became a witness protector, I was head of Saskatchewan Crime Scene Investigations. And that's when he slipped on the ice and hit his head. I suppose one could say... I hope he says it was an icy reception. It was an unfortunate accident. Give him time, he'll get better at these. Sadly, my fellow officers watched too much TV and expected me to entertain them. Looks like he had a heart attack while going through the car wash. I guess he's all... Washed up! Say washed up! Done getting his car washed. <sighs> this guy is boring. Shortly thereafter, I was pulled off CSI detail because I refused to belittle police work with corny one-liners and catchphrases. For Canada, where self-awareness isn't our strong suit! I wonder where he goes when he takes off like that. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Thank you, Jaden's father, for telling us about your exciting job with Canada's space program. <laughs> and now, from Regina Tourism, let's do our best to welcome Mr. McDougal. <gasps> Why didn't anyone run this by me? Webster's Dictionary defines tourism as a neurological disorder characterized by compulsive utterances of obscenities. That's Tourette's, you stupid illiterate f***. Huh? Oh, oh, uh, right. It's... We all know why the chicken crossed the road, but do you know how? With the help of tourism. That's... Too bad you can't tell him about your old job. The one you crapped all over to become a paper-pushing desk monkey in a fake-o industry made up by the government. Ooh, you're a senator. Screw you. I work for a living. Yeah, like every other sucker. You make me want to puke. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for helping me practice driving. But why the disguise? If I'm seen with a full-on nerd, the other kids will think I'm downtrending. I am not a full-on nerd. Oh my god, look at that cumulonimbus cloud! It looks like Schrodinger's cat! <gasps> Victoria Huntersmith. The kind of girl guys like me admire from afar, but never, ever get to speak to. At least that's what the principal told me at orientation. Forget the insurance! Just get out and start punching yourself in the balls as a sign of inferiority! Hey, I know you from school. You're one of the total losers who... Whoa, is that your girlfriend? Who, her? She's gorgeous. What's your name? Petey. You're kinda cute. Sorry I rammed you from behind. Maybe you can ram me from the front sometime. See you at school. Why'd she leave? Why isn't she suing and or humiliating you? I have no idea what just happened. Ha! Who's the dumb one now? Gina's right, I'm a loser. I used to run a crime syndicate. Now all I do is run out of pencils. Which reminds me, Toby told me to order more pencils. Where's my pencil? Here, stuff a couple of these down your pants to fill the void. Oh, very funny. It's not my fault nothing ever happens down at Regina Tourism. The Jimmy I know doesn't wait for nothing to happen. He makes nothing happen. And when the chips are down, my money's on him. Every time. 
Really? Yeah. You were once the king of New York. There's no reason you can't be the king of vagina! Regina, but whatever. Take the full weight of balls, Jimmy. All right, let's do this. First thing tomorrow. Oh, yeah, no, it's getting kind of late. Hey, Pete. Wow, I'm a Pete now. Want to hang out, or will your hot mystery girlfriend get jealous? Oh, uh, she doesn't even go to this school. Ooh, then what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Come with me. Are you skipping? What? No, I tripped on something. Rhythmically, several times in succession, not skipping. Hey, guys, this is Pete. I'm confused. Why am I here and not being stuffed into that garbage can, for example? You know how you look at someone and they're like a total loser? Only in the mirror. But then you see them in another light and suddenly they're really interesting. <sighs> it's too bad you have a girlfriend. Who knew pretend dating my own sister would have a downside? And so I present to you our new promotional campaign, Regina. Now with 30% less black flies. You want to bring some real tourism to this backwater burg? Talk to me. Um, this is Jimmy, whom we can thank for the pencils we're using. Pencils. Oh, pencils. Uh, Fellas, pencils. I got an idea that'll bring so much money into this town, the black flies will be driving Bentleys. And I can sum it up in one word. Gun show? ABBA reunion? Porno convention? How about all of those and more? Hit it, Cheech! Ah. I got a plan that just won't lose. So drop the beavers, flies, and moose. The crowds will come on planes and rockets with tons of cash to line up pockets. A rub and tug on every block? Dabernak, that sure would rock. Legalizing marijuana? We could be like Tijuana. That ain't it, you stupid rubes. No blowing loads of smoking dupes. They got these joints in Vegas and Reno. You know what I mean. It's a... It's a... Huh? Rhymes with Reno? Uh, Holocaust Museum? No, you jackass! It's a casino! <laughs> There's no one here, Schwa. I hope you have a song for how we're gonna pay for all this, Schwa. Oh my god, I blew it, Cook. I think I really am a schnook. That's the spirit, Jimmy. Keep singing! Don't fold them just yet, Jimmy. Like I said, when the chips are down... <laughs> I always bet on you! Oh, Jimmy? Hey, sweetie. You wanna get out of here? <sighs> sure, Cheech. Whoa, Cook! Sorry, I thought you was a hooker. Amazing work, Jimmy. Fun fact, in Canada, profits from gambling are reinvested in health, education, and infrastructure. That fact is nowhere near fun. What are you doing here? Anyway, don't you got a gambling problem? It's horse. He's excited about the casino, but I worry it might prove overwhelming for him. There's an old saying in the casino business, McCool. Who gives a sh It's a fucking horse. I got three Japanese businessmen cleaning up the blackjack. Want me to tap and yucky their faces? Don't bother. I sent in a cooler. Bust. Heart attack. Oh. Space debris. That old prick's lifetime losing streak is finally paying off. Hey, go tell that slob at the poker table about our dress code. It would be my pleasure. Look at you, Mr. Casino Manager. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Maybe you got a little something for the person who inspired all this? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> I know what you mean. Follow me. Wanna kill you to wear a tie? This 
Is my thanks a job at the coat check? I also got a tip. Lose the attitude. It's bad for business. Yo, Gazangas. I want you to show Mr. Takamori here a good time. Need I remind you that I'm your mother, young lady? Need I remind you that I'm your boss, sugar tits? You are so grounded after I punch out tonight. Hey, Pete. I just wanted to tell you that Mystery Girl dumped me. So I'm single and ready to tingle. Uh, Petey, that's not cool. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Hey, you called me Petey. What happened to Pete? Pete got dumped. Cool kids never get dumped. We do the dumping like this. <laughs> you guys are really good at this. I haven't touched the side once. <laughs> Hear that silence? It's how things sounded before white people came. I sure hope they come back soon. Oh, it's a dark day when we're asking for the whiteies to return. Yo, Pop, Crybaby here's got a beef. You stole my customers, Jimmy. I can almost taste the food you're taking from my children's mouths. I'm just giving people what they want, Terry. By that, I mean loose slots, not, you know, starving kids. Could you give me some tips? I'd love to help you, but I can't. Because I'm native? No, because you're my competition. Why do you guys always get so racial? Funny, you get that way after you've been beat down for centuries. Look, I'll make it up to you. We got a nice steakhouse here. You'll always have a reservation. Oh, you're hilarious, Jimmy. What? What did I say? What are you doing here, Terry? Getting screwed by your husband. It's been so friggin' long, I almost forgot what that's like. If I could get in to see him, I'd punch his fat face. I had to slip Gina 50 bucks. Why didn't I think of that? Come on, let's have a drink. Okay, but you're buying. I can't, I gave Gina all my money. If this works, I'll be back at the cool table with Victoria before you know it. Be right back. Hmm, this should cover Jetsy's high nipples. <gasps> This is not what it looks like. I'm just trying on your bra to see if it'll fit Jetsy. Those are my swimming goggles. Well, where have you been all my life? Anyone ever tell you you could be a model? <laughs> so if I break up with Jetsy in front of everyone, I might have a shot with Victoria. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. There's no way Jetsy could play Mystery Girl. What else am I supposed to do? Use the actress who originated the role. You'd do that for me? Of course, every great star gives back to the underprivileged. Now here's my contract. This is a stereo warranty. I'm playing along, can't you? Look at you, you degenerate gambling lowlife. I gave you two grand mark and you blew it already. <laughs> If you shrug them weird horsey shoulders at me again, I swear your head's gonna wind up in someone's bed. Think I'm joking? Mm, try me, motherfucker. Okay, okay, I've got him, Gina. Come on, old friend. I'll take you home. You've crapped out. Literally, I'm afraid. For Canada! Where even the hopelessly addicted get a free ride! Why the hell are we so empty? Cheech probably cooled the whole joint. Nah, he called in sick today. Well, word on the street is the Blackpool Casino's really cleaning up. Maybe I should go over there for a little powwow. Did you hear yourself? Show some sensitivity, will ya? Go watch Pocahontas or some sh**. How you doing? You can spice in my joint? I'll beat it out of you. I swear. Mark my words. Ho-ho! Oh, is that a shrimp boat? Well, Jimmy, looks like the moccasins on the other foot. Part of the rebranding. Free moccasins for everyone. Huh? Jeez, what the hell are you doing here? Hey, Jimmy! I mean, uh... <coughs> this is not the doctor's office. Oh, Jimmy, stop! She made an offer I couldn't refuse. Working for tips. What do you mean, she? Take your hands off my crap stealer, Jimmy. Cookie? What are you doing here? I'm running this joint. Oh, yeah. Hey, Takamura. I told you she was lucky. <laughs> the hell do you know about running a casino anyway? More than you, I worked in Atlantic City. On the boardwalk, guessing people's weight. To these guys, that's the big time. And it 
Beats working the coat check. That's what this is about? Fine. If you don't like the coat check, we'll find you something in the kitchen. Get out of my office. I'm warning you. If you don't quit right now, I will bury this casino. Like you buried your face in that shrimp boat? Bring it on, fat man. Oh, that's me. I got a new ringtone. Hello? Hey, Jetsy, how you doing? So come on down to Saskatchewan Casino, where we don't have roaches infesting our buffet. We don't have roaches, but we do have the loosest sluts in town. We also got the loosest sluts in town. <laughs> Ain't that right, sweetie? This week at Saskatchewan Casino, the incredible Kevin will give every audience member a new car. New <laughs> car, my ass. They're ripping them off from my parking lot, see? But you won't care about that when you're cruising the skies of Regina in our new free helicopter tour. Do you know what that f***ing plane cost me? But do I care? No. Because this week at Saskatchewan Casino, we've got Canadian rock legends the Guess Who. Tribute band? The Guess Whom? Cook, I can't take this no more. Let's call a truce. Your casino takes senior citizens and welfare moms. I'll take guys cutting loose on business trips. Who gets all the chronic gamblers? We'll divvy them up with some kind of lottery, which they will no doubt gamble on. Cheech, tell this ungrateful egomaniac to go f himself. But edit the swear for the kid's sake. Cheech, can you also ask Jetsy to call me? I miss him. She's known as Juicy now, and I took away her cell phone. Speaking of Juicy, did anyone ever tell you that you could be an escort? That's Teresa! Oh, I didn't recognize you, kid. It's cause I'm in character. Come on, Petey, let's go to make-out points. Have fun, kids! Wait, what did she say? Come on, Cheech. We gotta pick up our headliners at the airport. I don't want to keep Paul and Ringo waiting. <gasps> Hear that? She's got the Rolling Stones. It's time to pull out the big guns. I meant it metaphorically. Put this back in the garage. So this is make-out point, Regina style. Let's begin. <clears throat> so... What did you want to talk to me about, Petey? You look so serious. I brought you here so I can officially dump you. Um, did we land on a name? You are dumping me? Anastasia Champagne Superstar? Oh, Christ, we did. You sleep with my mother. You kill my father. Kick my dog and steal our family fortune, leaving us homeless. And prostitute. Destitute! Okay, good texture, but roll it back a little. Yes, I am dumping you, Anastasia! <gasps> <gasps> what the <gasps> hell? Where did you get that? The garage. Where else? I won't live without you! None of this is in the script! I'm an artist. I improvised. Yeah. On second thought, if I can't have you, no one will! Teresa! Would you stop? Did he say Teresa? <gasps> oh my god! That's Teresa McDougal! Uh, uh, Petey's dating his own sister! Huh? <gasps> that is so gross! Fucking inbred Scottish weirdos! <laughs> Webster's Dictionary defines impossible as the act of placing private property in custody of an officer of the law. That's impoundment, you ignorant banana! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Saskatchewan Casino is pleased to bring you from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, the Titanic. Paul and Ringo Chang's miniature rodeo was a total bust. 
Hello, Stonehenge? How much to ship them rocks to Canada? You druid motherfuckers want to play hardball? I got the hardest balls in town. Hey, Cook. Listen, I can't run the casino no more. I'm gonna ask Toby to transfer me back to my desk job. Yay! Oh, really? So you beat me, and you're retiring before I get a chance Look. to... Oh, that's sweet and gross. Now look over there. That's the guy who ran the casino on this tub. That'll be me if we keep this up. You're gonna die on a boat? No, I'll be alone. I wouldn't have had any of this if it wasn't for you believing in me. Was that so hard? You had to raise the freaking Titanic to avoid showing me a little gratitude? And look at those stupid skeletons. Oh, the ship's sinking. I better go have a nap. Morons. Come here, babe. Jeez. What were the odds of that thing going down again? Unsinkable my ass. Hey, guys. Any chance I... <laughs> I guess tis better to have loved and lost your own sister than never to have... Ugh, no, that's not right. Teresa, why aren't you being ostracized? Because I don't use words like ostrich size, and I don't fool around with my sister, you sick pervert! But fooling around with your brother is okay? It is if you're hot. I don't make the rules, Petey. Wish I had a brother to fool around with. That is so gross! <laughs> Wake up in crazy town? Neither of you works at a casino no more? Sweetie, with Pop's casino gone, the Black Paw don't need me. You mooks threw away the best thing that ever happened to us. You know what would make you feel better? Do not condescend to me, Ma. Ha! It's condensate. Who's the banana now, Gina? All right. How about you hop up on this here bed? And help us count all the money we skimmed. Uh? <laughs> Why'd you have to get all mushy on me? Anyone seen Cheech, by the way? And who's giving the bride away? I am, Your Majesty. <laughs> Pull yourself together. He's a good catch. Freeze! That bride is underage! Good luck, Juicy! I'm keeping the dowry! Oh. <laughs> How you doing? If you are like me, you could use some time off. In the old life, it was never easy for me to take a vacation. Booking on points is so freaking complicated. Plus, I had to leave Cheech in charge. <sighs> Son of a... Cheech, you better be on fire or dead. And if so, how are you calling? Jimmy, I'm locked out of the club. What are you bothering me for? Call Fats and get the other key. I can't. He's locked inside. <sighs> Oh, huh? What do you mean, you and Fats are both locked in? I was on the roof, there's a skylight, the rest is a blur. But it's not our club. What? Someone's here, I gotta go. Turned out to be the Spamonte family's club. Cheech didn't want to pay for the skylight he broke, so he just up and shot everybody. Around the neighborhood, they still call it the Jimmy's Trip to Aruba Massacre. I always called it the Fats is a big fucking crybaby bloodbath. God rest his soul. Now that I'm in witness protection, it's like a permanent vacation. At a two-star resort where everybody says sorry all the time. We've only had one vacation from this apologetic iceberg of a country. And was it worth it? Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Jimmy, get in here! I've got the dirty little bastard cornered! What is it, a mouse? Nah, it's one of Teresa's boyfriends trying to sneak out. <clears throat> no sleepovers, kid. That's it? You're letting him go? 
take him out back and explain the rules to his face. Ah, cook, who gives a crap? I'm free. I've been in there since... Ah, my eyes! Ah! Look at him, McCool. He's depressed. Snap out of it! You got nothing to be depressed about, you useless sack of garbage! Pop, if you decide to slit your wrists, have some courtesy and do it in the bathtub. You need a gun, slugger. Take my calls. I'm not wiping your brains off mine. Nah, Jimmy will go out like a wise guy. Suck in an oxygen tank in prison. Sweet Mitsu's cowboy! Jimmy's under the moon and you're all making morbid jokes. Clearly, Canada's character-building midwinter gloom is affecting all of you. But I have a solution. Please say therapy. Please say therapy. A vacation! Aw, oh, come on! <gasps> you hear that, Jimmy? We're going on vacation! Yeah, right. Knowing McCool, it'll be a day trip to Lake Who Gives a Shit. Fuck Canada! Where everyone needs to get the hell out once in a while! <laughs> Don't move, you capitalist pigs! I'm taking this plane to Cuba! <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Welcome to Cuban Airlines. I'm your pilot, Brad. That's just a little thing we do to lighten the mood around here. Enjoy the flight. McCool, you said vacation, not being babysat by a Fed in a communist hellhole. But Cuba's perfect. There's literally no chance you'll be spotted by the mob. Then why are you coming with us? I need a vacation from all things Canuck, or I'm gonna lose my freaking mind! No, of course. I, I just thought we could, you know... Hang. The whole point of this was to stop me from hanging. Myself. Oh, no, no problem, Jimmy. I, I won't get in your hair. For the next week, old Street McCool's gonna be all about rest, rejuvenation, and relaxation. How can you relax in a country that treats people so bad? Every country has its share of human rights violations. Except Canada, of course. Yeah, no, you guys are awesome. I ain't seen a Cuban since that thing we did not do in Dallas. Excuse me, I gotta kill Kennedy. I mean, take a leak. I can't wait to take in the music, culture, and revolutionary atmosphere of Cuba. The people's paradise. Shut up, Trotsky. Kids, get the waitress to open the door. Bienvenido a Cuba. Liberated from American business interests and mafia-controlled casinos since 1959. Tommy sons of bitches. You know, I ran one of them casinos down here back in the day. I banged so many Cuban broads. They gave me a nickname, Don Juan de Gonorrhea. How old were you? I don't know, 20... no, 10. Look around, Jimmy. Cuba's a paradise. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough! You're not leaving my side for the next week! He's a nice Canadian boy. He's French Canadian. You'll have your panties off faster than you can say. I think the word you're looking for is wow, huh? <laughs> Give me those back. I should mention, and I know this from experience, do not drink the tap water here lest you get a porcelain shattering case of Batista's revenge. Huh? Want to go for a dip in a pool? Nah, too many German tourists. Oh, it's the Bay of Pigs. <laughs> <sighs> Jimmy, lighten up. Cuba ain't so bad. It ain't so good either. Hey, where's Gina? I'm supposed to watch her in case she drowns. Somebody. She's probably over at the kids' club. <laughs> ah, to be a child again. Petey unless I buy a timeshare. Petey's gonna have to ride it out. Escorpion Azul. Escorpion Azul. Ma, I think he's trying to tell us something. Cuba is home to the legendary blue scorpion, reputed to cure everything from cancer to diarrhea. But Petey, we can't go into a dangerous jungle just because you got fizzy gravy. Mom's right. I'll be at the pool. How does he do that? On second thought, we're going. Why should Petey suffer? This vacation sucks. 
So long as you don't. Gina, what are you doing in here? I thought you'd be out selling black market Bibles. You know, there's a swim-up bar. You don't even gotta get up to go to the John. What's this? It's nothing. It's a porno machine, Jimmy. Don't you know anything? Give me that! Mind your business. <laughs> Greetings, fellow Americans. I represent the five families of organized crime who do not exist. We've joined forces with the government to encourage patriotic sociopaths like you to eliminate the communist leader of Cuba. If successful, you'll be granted super-made status and be untouchable by the mob. You'll also get a lifetime presidential pardon from the feds. Ain't that right, Jack? Ooh. Act fast, and we'll throw in a free lobotomy for your yappy missus. Mm -hmm. How did you know about this? How did you not? It's been around since the 60s. So you are gonna kill Castro? Look who just clued in. Are these guys gonna f or what? So once we take out El Presidente, we can go back to New York. No way. I'm doing this alone. When you and Cheech get involved, things always go straight into the crapper. She's got a point, Jimmy. Sometimes you're a real screw-up. <laughs> You can't do this alone. You'll wind up in Cuban jail with all the poets and playwrights. It'll be so boring! I'll cut the act, Pop. If we're gonna get our old life back by killing a guy, let's do it together like a family. Fine. But I'm not taking a backseat on my own caper, capiche? You were saying? One day I'll be taller, but you'll always be a fat ass! Let's go! <laughs> What am I doing here? We're supposed to be on vacation, not out in the sticks hunting down an insect. Keep looking. Extremely rare blue scorpions can't be that hard to find. I see one! Where? On your arm! Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Are you kidding me? We had one, and you went and killed it! Oh. Petey, we're not camping here. Get out of the sleeping bag! All right, we only get one shot at this. How do you know he's in there? Cause while you girls were packing your bikinis, I was planning this caper to the letter. Every day after brunch, he comes to that window to feed his pigeon, Lee Harvey Birdswalt. And when he does... I'm gonna turn his head into a mist. Jimmy, that's beautiful. I thought it up on the ride over. Wasn't sure if I'd use it. Well, I for one am glad you did. Give me that! Orphan Castro was my idea. I'm doing the honors. Why wait? I'll go in there right now and blow his head off. I'm the boss. I'll do it. But I am the boss's uncle. Shut up, you mooks. You want the whole country to know what we're doing? She's right. Keep it down. Hey, look, it's McCool. <sighs> Yo, McCool! Jeez, what are you doing? Hide the gun. See what I mean? Right into the crapper. Fancy seeing you three. Come to take in the sights, sounds, and smells of old Havana. Yeah, yeah, sights and smells. We're doing sounds tomorrow. Why are you walking around all alone? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Not now, Cheech. Why? I'm just saying he looks all lonely and pathetic, like a loser. I'm not lonely. Matter of fact, I'm going to visit my Cuban friend, Ronaldo Garcia. Well then, you better get going. Hey, I knew a Garcia once. He drove an ice cream truck. Here in Havana? No, no, in New York. Oh. You think they're related? Oh my god, Cheech! Give me that! I doubt it. Ronaldo is an orphan. Well, he's probably dying to see you then. Hang on, hang on. It wasn't Garcia. It was Gonzalez. For the love of food! So, probably not related. Cool. Okay, well, off to the, um, orphanage. Cheerio. Damn it! Put this in your mouth. What? What did I do? Mm. 
Oh, Esmeralda, your hands are so soft. Mm. He's tripping balls, Ma. When are you gonna give up? When he's dead? You wish. Keep looking. Come on, Petey. Let's go back to the resort. <laughs> Fine. Take your chances with Ma. Teresa, you can't leave me here. Why? Because you're scared I might actually have fun on this vacation? No. Because I'm lost. <laughs> Get out of here! That is not how my son is losing his virginity. <laughs> Our one chance, and you blew it! It's McCool's fault. The guy wouldn't shut up about his stupid friend. You did it to me again. Without you dopes, I'd be toasting Castro's headless cadaver with a Cuba Libre. You know that's just rum and coke. Ugh. Presidential palace, por favor. And that, mi amigos, is how the Cuba Libre differs from a mere rum and coke. That is cool. <laughs> I see what you're doing here. Y you do? Don't think I didn't notice. You drove around a little bit. I... uh... <laughs> it's okay, comrade. But you do that with the tourists, yes? Not with El Jefe. Okay? Okay. Hasta luego! That is one charming motherfucker. What a presence, this guy. I got goosebumps. No wonder he's so hard to kill. <gasps> ah, god damn it. It's like, I just wanted him to like me. I know, I couldn't make a move. You almost forget that man's a bloodthirsty dictator. You think he liked me? Punch it! It's the only road I recognized. Did you have to stop for a fare? Gina, this resort ain't cheap. Jimmy! McCool, you been drinking? Oh, yeah, me and Ronaldo Garcia when we get together. Hi, <laughs> Chihuahua! I miss Horse. <laughs> I'm in here! Horse? No, it's El Jefe! I'm in the trunk! Oh, God, Jimmy, you didn't! Technically, it was Gina. And the rat comes out. From Heller's dinosaurs, what have you done? Okay, this is fixable. We'll drop in back at the palace and pay the cab. Congratulations, Jimmy. You've liberated Cuba and ruined my life. I trusted you. See, that was your first mistake. <gasps> we can still get through this. Let me do the talking. No, thanks a lot, guys. Come on. Move it. Keep it going. Keep going. Get them. They took El Jefe. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I'm... Halt! You are trespassing on American soil. Do not move or we shoot. American soil? Yeah! <laughs> American soil. Oh, that's better. I cannot believe you assassinated a president to get away from Canada. I thought we were friends. What's friendship got to do with it? Apparently nothing. All right, let's get one thing straight. I'm not offering you weirdos asylum, got it? But we killed Castro. We killed Castro too. Killed him good. Shut up. 
If I had a dime for every nutjob who hopped that fence claiming to have killed Castro, I'd have a mountain of dimes, and I'd sit on that mountain and declare myself the king of dimes! That sounds amazing. My point is, we're handing you right back to the Cuban authorities. Excuse me, Colonel Korn. I think you'd better see this. Multiple sources confirm Castro has been kidnapped by a red-headed midget posing as a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Mr. President, it's confirmed. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Oh, I am so fucking fired. <gasps> what? I can swear. Mother, I couldn't find one stinking bug. It's an arachnid, and you're a great mother. A great mother wouldn't let this happen. But you can't watch your kids every move, right? Well, I should have thought before I drank from that. I just want to keep Teresa from making the same mistakes I did. Oh, we're on Teresa now? You don't got to worry about me, Ma. How did you find us? And what's he doing here? You won't believe this. Jean-Philippe here likes to catch these and stick them up his ass. Keeps down the hemorrhoids. Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Ma, what the hell? Sorry. Those things creep the shit out of me. You got another one up there, JP? If you would have trusted me, we could have had fun instead of running around the jungle like Boob Raider. It's Tomb Raider. Shut up, Edie. Oh. Teresa, you're right. Uh, you didn't do anything with Jan Philip here, did you? Not at all. I'm not the one he likes. Anybody else feel a bridge? Holy crap, are you good? <laughs> Ah, Jesus. <laughs> what? No goodbye? All this time, I've gone above and beyond to protect you, and now you lie to me and walk away like it was nothing? What, are we married? You lied to me, too. I did no such thing. Really? What about Ronaldo Garcia? You saw through that? <sighs> I made him up. I felt silly being out all alone while you three were having fun committing a murder. Don't take it so hard, McCool. Of all the cops I've ever known, you're my favorite. That's not saying much. Coming from me, that's saying a lot. Put it there, pal. Hey, where's Air Force One going? Well, Castro was found with third degree burns by three Canadian tourists who revived him with the venom of a blue scorpion. Can you believe that sh This family is a freaking curse. So, no medals? No getting super made? No. Well, what about the free lobotomy? I'll give you a lobotomy. Come here! Yo, Colonel, seeing as we came pretty close to Hoffman House, Tommy Dante, you think we could get a chopper ride right back to the resort? Get the hell off my base. <laughs> Gorgeous weather in Cuba, huh? Damn shame the American people can't go there. Maybe I ought to do something about that. Can you believe this? Ma and them flew home first class courtesy of El Presidente. And we're rowing a fucking truck. I stand by my choice to sell our passports to those Arabs in Gitmo. I don't even know why we bothered with a vacation. I'm just as depressed as I was before. But Jimmy, you lied to a policeman, stole a taxi cab, and almost whacked someone. What more could you want? You know, you're right. And I made 28 bucks driving that cab. Which you'll have to declare at customs. And you wonder why we didn't want to hang out with you. Keep rowing, Jimmy. Keep rowing. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, currently known as Jimmy McDougal. Back in the old days, when I was a big shot, the most important person in my life was my lawyer. 
When you make an honest living breaking the law, never misunderestimate the value of a good shyster. Suppose I allegedly tried to whack a guy and he went to the cops. Would I be in trouble? Hmm. The guy was available night and day. It's me. I know it's 4 a.m. and you're in the Hamptons, but you gotta come to the city and bail me out. <sighs> I need you to get rid of this for me. <clears throat> Nothing seemed to phase this guy. Then out of the blue, he robs a liquor store and gets sent to jail. This guy went to Harvard. Why would he do that? Thank God. Just put me in a deep, dark hole and get me away from Jimmy Falcone. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I don't need no lawyer, because I got my own personal Mountie. Hey, McCool, can you get me one of them new smarty pants phones? We've been through this, Jimmy. I can't cater to your every little whim. The answer is no, so just... I can't believe I'm going to say this. Forget about it. Oh! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. So, they took your appendix, huh, McCool? I'll give you one of mine, but it's probably messed up from hard living. But, Uncle Cheech, the human appendix is a vestigial organ. I've been kicked in the vestigials. I feel your pain, McCool. I hope you like the flowers. It was the most expensive ones they had. Nothing's too good for our Mountie. We got the banner just in case. Listen, Doc, this guy's a friend of the family. Send his bill to us. What bill? I like you. You learn fast. Cookie, is Jimmy coming? His smiling face and ceaseless cigar smoke always brighten my day. Don't worry, I'm sure he's on his way. I sent that bonehead plenty of reminders. <laughs> ah, crap, I slept past five. What's with him? He's looking right at me. He's still there. What if he's a hitman? This is bad. Son of a... Toby, what are you doing sneaking up on a guy like that? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. I just came to remind you, if you're going to stay late, don't forget to put in for overtime. Thanks, Toby. My pleasure. All right, you bastard. You want me? Come get me. Gotcha! Toby! Jeez! Sorry! I thought you were someone else! Maybe uh, I should start wearing a bell? I wish you'd have thought of that earlier! It's that guy again! What guy? All I can see are fuzzy shapes. You've reached Special Agent Straight McCool. Just leave a message, Jimmy. You're the only one who ever calls. McCool, I've been made. There's a guy tailing me. Meet me at home. And grab me a slice on your way. I'm starving. Ow! What the hell, Ma? You know that bear Gina has in her room with a dollar sign on it? Sure, sure. Money bear. Okay. I was in her room getting rid of anything that might be construed as evidence, and I think I might have threw out Money Bear. What? You know how Gina gets when you touch her stuff. Remember when you tried to get her off the pacifier? She was like a badger, clawing and scratching, and that sound she made. <laughs> I wore an eye patch for a year. Exactly, so I don't want to know about this. I can't believe my own daughter's gonna abandon me in a time when I'm in danger from my other daughter. What? Nothing? Nothing. Now. Someone's after me. I need a gun. 
Thanks, kid. Where'd you get this? You want a gun or you want to ask stupid questions? Where the hell were you? Paul McCool's lying in the hospital and you can't... Wait a second, McCool's in the hospital? Why didn't you tell me? That means we're on our own. What are you talking about? I don't get time to explain. I think we've been made. <laughs> Whoa, easy, Tiger. Boy, Jimmy, I've been trying to introduce myself all night, but you kept giving me the slip. Who the hell are you? And who sent you? I came as soon as I got your message. Jimmy, this is FBI agent Rick Chick Magnet. Is pepperoni okay? All they had was pepperoni. It's kind of cold. What do you feds want from me now? The Bureau wants to interview you for an ongoing investigation, Jimmy. Nice to meet you. I'm Special Agent McCool. Let me guess. First name, not so? Nice uniform, not so. <laughs> so what do you say, Jimmy? Deal or not a deal? No way. I had enough of being a no-good snitch for one lifetime. In the eyes of the U.S. government, you're no snitch. You, sir, are a hero. You sure you got the right Jimmy? Oh, and by the way, I brought eight pounds of gabagool from Polly's Deli in New York. Yay! <gasps> Jimmy, what's a gabagool? It's lunch meat. Now put on some pants, will you? Come on in, chick magnet. I guess I'll be heading back to the old hospital. <laughs> For Canada! And ow! Oh, my stitches popped. <laughs> Well, Jimmy, you've been a huge help. The tip about Don Barzini alone is enough to blow the case wide open. When you take him down, tell him I said yo. <laughs> I sure will. Uh, now listen, between you and me, how do you like it up here in the great mild north? Don't ask. What if I told you that as a reward for your cooperation, the Bureau is willing to relocate your family? What? <laughs> That's right, Jimmy. To sunny California. Really? What did you say? California? Are you serious? The details are right in here. I'll take you and Cheech down to the North Dakota field office for processing, and the family can meet us in California. Do you hear that? We're gonna be Americans again! But wait, I was just getting to like it here. The schools are better, the medical care is top-notch, and I just finished building my first igloo in the backyard. Pipe down, Petey. You can build plenty of googie goos in California. Hang on. Petey might have a point. Is it right to keep moving the kids around like homeless gypsies? Let's get the Chick Magnet's giving you a six-bedroom house, a full cable package, and a job as a nude beach lifeguard? Are you sure you don't want to stay in Canada, Jimmy? I'm positive. California's got sunshine, no snow, and unfettered access to burritos. My hands are tied here. Well, then, I suppose this is goodbye? Really? I never hugged a cop before. Unless I was stabbing him. In a way, you have stabbed me, Jimmy. Right through the heart. Jeez, all right. <gasps> You're crying now? No, no, my incision became severely infected when I left the hospital to meet you last night. That's what you get for ignoring doctor's orders. Anyway, I'll send you a postcard. It'll have my new name on it. Jimmy Gonzalez. <gasps> I got a replacement for Money Bear. You think that piece of crap's gonna fool Gina? Where's the dollar sign on the front? I'll sew it on, but first we gotta age it to look like Money Bear. What's he look like? I need details. I don't know, ask Petey. I can, he'll say, Mother, honesty is the best policy and get us all killed. Wait, it had an eye missing. Good, good, so we'll pry off one of the son of a bitch's eyes. Which one? Think! I had it, but you slapped it out of me. Well, Igloo, in saying goodbye to you, I'm also saying farewell to Canada. Yeah, we're leaving right now. Ugh, don't sweat it. They don't suspect a thing. <gasps> I'm not telling you where they are. You'll send guys to whack them, and I don't get my million-dollar bounty. See you in Fargo. You bring the money, I'll bring the Falcones. God, I hate Canada. Snow in my pants. All right, boys, let's head off to your new life. So long, Cook. Next time you see me, we'll be in sunny California. And I'll be selling oranges at the off-ramp in a leopard print thong. You take good care of my Jimmy, okay? Of course I will. <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna get him across the border, put a bullet in his head, and sell him to the mob or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
call McCool. Searching for my stool. Would you like me to book a colonoscopy? <gasps> Agent McCool special here. McCool! Rick Chick Magnet is gonna kill my dad! Slow down, I'm on morphine, so I'm having trouble following. Who's this again? It's Petey. Rick Chick Magnet is taking Dad and Cheech to the mob. Chick Rick Magnet? What are you calling me for? You think you're so cool. You want cool? Try morphine. This sh is awesome. This isn't Chick Magnet. It's Petey. Petey? Hey, kid, I tell you, if I tried this morphine junk when I was your age, I never would have become a cop. I'd have become a jazz dancer. Snap out of it! My dad's in trouble! Did I ever tell you how Mummy supported us when Daddy left? The men she brought home, we called them my uncles. No, uncle, I won't fix you a drink. Get your own damn highball, you filthy pervert! <laughs> what am I gonna do? Dad's gonna die! Help! I'm bored. Are we there yet? Hey, let's play I Spy. What are you, six? Take it easy, Chick Magnet. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I spy with my little eye something that's gonna get slaughtered. What? See? A truck full of lambs. <laughs> oh, right. Good one. I'll try again. I spy with my little eye dead meat. Who, me? No, no. There's some roadkill over there. <laughs> One more. I spy with my little eye two wise guys who are gonna get whacked. All right, you're freaking me out. What? Relax. It's just Martin Scorsese's new movie. We are so seeing that. Hey, Cheech? Cheech. Aw, he fell asleep. <laughs> Mummy, you don't have to turn on the red light. <sighs> wow, what a trip. Won't be doing that again. Oh, look, Petey called. Thundering Thunder Bay, Jimmy. <laughs> Gallop like the wind horse, Jimmy's in trouble. Oh, Canada! Where friendship trumps infection every time! Okay, now we run them through the dryer a bunch of times to make them look old. I can't do this! I can lie to you and Pop, but Gina, she's got those eyes. They burn right through ya. Don't you fall apart on me now! If this doesn't look exactly like Money Bear, you and me are going to California in a pine box. What the hell are they talking about Money Bear for? He's right down here. What are they so freaked out about? I'm out. You're out when I say you're out. <laughs> I could have a lot of fun with this. Look at that. Three more Kimson will be in the good old U.S. of A. First thing I'm going to do is get me some poutine and a bottle of maple syrup. Hey, get a load of McCool. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Let us go, it's for the best. For us, at least. Cross. I can't hear you. I'll Skype you from Cali. <laughs> Yo, Chick Magnet, relax. He's just trying to say goodbye again. Pull over. Screw that. You're under my jurisdiction now. Technically, not for two more Kims. Oh! <laughs> We're alive, Jimmy. You know what this means? Seatbelts actually work. McCool, you crazy bastard. What are you doing? Oh, run. Run. What's he saying? Rum? Rum. Poor bastard needs a drink. I know the feeling. Quit fooling around. This guy needs help. Oh, God. Could you possibly be more dense? I'm trying to kill you, you stupid moron. But what about California? Oh! What the 
hell are you trying to kill us? You're a fed. I'd explain, but I hate it when bad guys stand around telling their plan when they could just kill the hero. I'm a lot of things, but a hero ain't one of them. Ah, my eyes! Ah! Do you ever wash your feet? <clears throat> hey, Jimmy, if I drop my pants, do I get a piggyback too? Between you and me, my nuts are like ice cubes. I know, I know. I'm cold too. No, oh, I mean all the time. We need to find shelter. Hey, maybe there's a Howard Johnson's out here. How about that old pond? I bet that joint don't even have cable. Damn it! It still looks good as new. And he smells spring fresh! I'll warm up the car. We'll run over his head a couple times. Whose head is Ma gonna run over? <gasps> oh, hi, Gina. How are you, little sis? What's behind your back? What? Oh, nothing. All right, now you got me curious. And when I get curious, I like answers. You know how I like to get answers, Teresa? <laughs> how? The hard way. <laughs> Poor guy's turning blue. We gotta find something to start a fire. Don't waste your time. He knew this was a one-way ride. Come on, Cheech. The guy risked his life to save my ass after I treated him like a jerk. Which makes him a huge pushover, but still. Way I see it, if he dies, we can survive on him for weeks. He's built like Conan. The barbarian, not the weird redhead on TV. Cheech, I'm hungry too, but we're not eating McCool. Get a fire going. You work nights as an arsonist. Should be a cinch. Look for anything that'll burn. Forget it, Jimmy. We're all gonna freeze in here. Wait, I know. This ought to burn for a while. <clears throat> Changed your mind? Ah, the tag was chafing me. You threw out Money Bear. You got any idea why I call him Money Bear? Because I keep money in him, that's why. I had three grand in there. Hey, where's Mom? Dad's in trouble. <laughs> now, let's have a little talk about how I'm going to get my money back. <sighs> I'm not the one you want. It's Ma. She dragged me into this. Oh, sure, I get it. You was just an innocent bystander. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Gina. I'll get your money, I promise. Whatever it takes, just don't hurt me. All right, seeing as your family, I'll cap the vig at 3%. And let this be a lesson to you. Don't keep no secrets from me. <laughs> Easiest three grand I ever made. Uh, this ain't what it looks like. Get up to your room. You're grounded. Ah, crap. That's it? She's grounded? You didn't say a word about throwing out a stupid bear. What, am I gonna incriminate myself? Oh, that's great. I owe her a bunch of money, and you got off with nothing? Well, kid, I'm a mob wife. I got an instinct for dodging bullets. How much you into it for, anyway? I don't know. How many dollars are in three percents? I can't take this no more. We gotta fight back. Our first mistake was not bringing guns. Wait a sec. McCool might have a gun. Ah, uh, I'm way ahead of you. What are you doing? Passing the time till help comes. Gimme that! Find something to make clothes. We're going outside. Hey, we could have just burned this stuff. All right, Chick Magnet, get him up. Get him up? You sound like a no good cop. Let's see them hands. Yippee ki yay, Sheriff. Oh, you making fun of me? Nah, just kidding around, officer. Spit it out. You saying I gone soft? No, oh, I'm saying I'd have shot the guy already. Oh, yeah? How's that? You missed. The old snowman decoy trick works every time, except in summer. You're a disgrace, Chick Magnet, turning your back on your badge for a few lousy bucks. More like a million bucks, Jimmy. What? Me and Cheech are worth a million bucks to the mob? Just for you. For Cheech, I get a coffee maker. Oh, I went up! 
I used to be worth a three-pack of tube socks. The only coffee you'll be brewing will be in prison, Chick Magnet. McCool! You're alive! Now who am I gonna have for lunch? Your humble shirt and pants fire was enough to temporarily spur my immune system, Jimmy. Now let's see how your immune system handles a hot lead injection, Donkey Dong. Horse! Good boy! Give him hell, horsey! Stop it, horse! You're only stomping lifeless pulp! Up on, boys! No sense riding on an empty stomach. Let's roast up the G-Man before we go. Enough with the cannibalism! What do you want from me? I got a craving. Haiti told us what happened. Are you boys okay? Everyone's fine, despite being chased by a lunatic out for personal gain. Funny. Same thing happened to me and Teresa. But why let one rogue federal agent ruin the big move to California? Uh, about that, Cookie, it appears that Chick Magnet engineered the whole thing. I know, what a bastard, but we're still going, right? Right? Sorry, Cook. Jesus Christ! That's my hopes are... <laughs> well, McCool, I guess you ain't getting rid of us that easy. I suppose not. I must thank you, Jimmy. You went above and beyond to keep me alive. I just burned a shirt off my back. It was nothing. No, Jimmy, it was proof. You like me. You really like me. Well, I should get back to hospital. The infection is starting to take hold again. <gasps> Let's cook them like a Christmas ham. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone. I used to be part of a crime family in New York, and like any father, I wanted to see if my son was cut out for the family business. But you can't just jump into extortion, racketeering, and murder. You gotta take baby steps. See that guy delivering papers on your block? Your turf? Don't you want a piece of that action? Go. There you go. Look out! Ooh. He's supposed to beat the kid up and take his money. What's he doing? He's working, Jimmy. Makes me sick. Okay, so we find someone weaker. Build the kid's confidence. See that old deadbeat? He's behind on his payments. Take care of him. My first assault was an old guy, too. Look at him. This is humiliating. Ow! What the hell? What's this about you grooming Petey to take over the family business? What? No! I can't believe you picked him over me! It's not like that! Fine! One day, I'm gonna start my own crew, and I will bury you, fat man! Anyhow, I realize Petey wasn't cut out for gangster. No sh Sherlock. But hey, now that I live in Regina and work in an office, maybe my son will finally follow in my footsteps. Actually, Pop, I'm gonna be a physicist. Yeah, right. Like you could ever be a gym teacher. <laughs> Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! Drive to me, drive! What's it look like I'm doing? Giving birth? Oh, I can't see! Ow! Ow! Okay, there's definitely a wall on your right side. Screw it! Now go on foot! <laughs> go on without me, Jimmy. Leave me to die. Oh, come on! You can't... I just need a case of beer! I can't believe you left me back there to die. We didn't make it. It's closed. Kill me now, Jimmy, please. Hey, McCool. When I agreed to move to Canada, nobody told me the government controls the liquor. They also control gambling, medical marijuana, and heroin injection sites. No matter what your vice, Canada's got you covered. Why can't I get a freaking bottle of booze after 9 p.m.? Jimmy, the days of drive through liquor at alcoholic-enabling prices are behind you. Mother Canada is here to save you from yourself. <laughs> <laughs>
For Canada, where no one has fun after 9 p.m. <laughs> Except in Quebec. Yeah. Oh, cheer up. One night without a few drinks ain't gonna kill ya. That ain't the point. Nobody tells me when I can and can't enjoy a drink. Well, looks like Mother Canada just did, you big baby. Screw this, I got an idea. Back in Prohibition days, how did people get booze? Mama used to blow sailors for a bottle of gin. Which way to the docks? Uh, for the last time, I didn't take your cheap gold-plated earrings that are only worth six bucks at the pawn shop. It's not that, it's my report card. I'm acing all my classes, straight Ds, except I got this one F. You're failing P.E.? <laughs> Who the hell fails Jim? Jim? I thought P.E. was a bathroom break. Anyway, if I fail, I fail the 11th grade. Coach says the only way I can pass is to sign up for an intramural sport. If you ask me, the only sport we're signing up for is hockey. It's got speed, blades, and fighting. I don't know. You're right. Look at the bright side. After you fail, you and Petey can be in the same grade. Yeah, you can be lab partners. Sharing a locker, eating lunch at the nerd table. Stop it, stop it, I'll play hockey. Ah, but it's gonna suck to have three periods. You boys do realize the liquor store's open again. We don't need them no more. Mother Canada can blow me. Well, don't come crying to me if drinking that crap makes you go blind. Jimmy, if we do go blind, can I get a monkey? Hey, this beer ain't half bad. Half bad is whole good. What a relief. Now we don't gotta throw all this out. Oh, for crying out loud, I am getting sick of you two sitting around drinking beer all day. You wanna be bums? Go do it in the garage. We can't, cause the garage is full of beer. Oh! Ow. Ow. Well, could you at least quit using our living room as your own personal clubhouse? Why are you getting on our case, Cook? We ain't hurting no one. Oh, no? What about the example you're setting for the kids? Nah, they know better than to sit around drinking like degenerates. What are you looking at, old man? You want to fight? I'll fucking fight ya! <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of this place sooner. It's right next door and no one's lived here for months. It's gonna be perfect, our own personal clubhouse. I always wanted to have a man cave. It wasn't, you know, an actual cave. Okay, let's work on the fundamentals. You mean skating and teamwork? Nah, forget all that. First off, both ends of your stick come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's easy to make that one look accidental if you're keeping up appearances. Now later, when you're not, this is called shirting. You do this on the street, you get five months. In here, you get five minutes. God, I love this game. Once we get power, we should put in a big screen TV and a jukebox. And a bubble machine, Jimmy. Nothing says man cave like a bubble machine. I thought this place was empty. It's supposed to be. Come on. Hey, maybe it's one of them polter ghosts. You mean Geist? What the hell's a Geist a ghost? Ah, there's nothing here. <laughs> How's it going, eh? Who the hell are you? And what are you doing in our clubhouse? I'm Mike, that's Ricky, and this here's Kenny. Thanks for giving me one of my beers. It's ghost beer now, Jimmy. Let it go. Something tells me you're not the new owners. Well, no. We smelled fresh brew, door was open, and Matt said welcome. Would have been kind of rude not to come in, you know? Well, you guys are still trespassing. <sighs> come on, fellas. Let's go find a snowbank where we can drink in peace until the cops come. <laughs> Don't worry, Kenny. We'll find a warm place to drink this amazing beer. <laughs> really? You guys like it? Like it? It's the best. It's even better than what you get at the beer store. And I bet around here, we wouldn't have to worry about being cut off because we're all intoxicated. Or because they're closed. I know what that's like. 
You know what? Make yourself at home, boys. Cheers, fellas. Welcome to our club, where men are free to do whatever they want to do. What the hell are you doing, Cheech? I'm taking a dump on the floor. <clears throat> Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep the party going till you guys get back, okay? <laughs> nice bunch of guys. Hey, McCool, what are you doing here? I felt bad about denying you and Cheetah's alcoholic tendencies the other night, so I'm here to show you that we Canadians still know how to have a good time. But not a long time, I have to work tomorrow. Sorry, McCool, we're drunk out. We've been partying with our neighbors all night. Great Giddy Lee! <laughs> Those are hosers! What the hell's a hoser? Allow me to enlighten you with this National Film Board of Canada educational film. The great Canadian hoser evolved under the harshest of winter conditions, but Homo hoserectus has proven himself a survivor. This meek creature got his name from having to flood or hose the ice after losing each hockey game. The hoser's inability to attract breeding partners has resulted in a steep decline in its population. Their struggle for survival is compounded by encroaching subcultures of emos, metrosexuals, and white people who like hip-hop. Today, sightings of this plaid-shirted nincompoop of the North are increasingly rare. For more information on the hoser, contact the Heritage Protection Council of Canada or visit your local beer store. Gentlemen, we are in the presence of a wonder of nature. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah! That was excellent! It's too cold! My ankles hurt! I can't do hockey! Yes, you can! Just pretend the other team's a bunch of crazy broads at a shoe sale. Now get in there and take what's yours! I do. Not bad. Next time, don't hold back. Okay, this game is called Brewski Roulette. One of these beers is loaded, so you randomly pick one and open it near your face. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you been hosed, you hoser. <laughs> Now, oh! No, 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 this next game is choice. Okay, so like you take a nickel, eh? You put her between your cheeks, okay, and you get a clench on, right? And you just like, you know, give her. Oh! <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you play bum darts. We have much to learn from your people. <laughs> <laughs> I think it went up. Oh. That's cheating! Ow! Two minutes for spearing. That's it! You're a growing girl! We'll be next door, eh? Again? That's the third night this week. I know, eh? But for the first time since we moved here, I met some fellas I can really relate to. Look at yourself. You can't walk two steps without breaking into a sweat. You smell like the floor of a saloon. And if you say A one more time without meaning the first letter of the alphabet, I'll twist your nuts off. I can still go, right? <laughs> Come on, Cookie. I'm just going over there for a quick round of bum darts. Jesus! It's worse than I thought! No, it's not what you think. It's just a fun little game. Jimmy, think back to the old life. When you were hanging around the club with your friends, did you guys ever play games that involved your butts? <sighs> now you put it like that, it sounds all kinds of wrong. Warm up the TV. I'm staying in. But first, I gotta throw out all our nickels. <laughs> Oh, hello. 
You must be one of Teresa's many, many boyfriends. Petey, it's me! Have we met before? I can't quite place you. Well, better get back to the books. Nice meeting you. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> What's happening to me? Hey, Jimmy! Jimmy! Just ignore them and they'll go away. Oh! What's the opposite of ignore? Because that's what I'm about to do. What are you idiots doing? I'm trying to watch TV with my wife and you're breaking my windows. We just want you to come over, Jimmy. Kenny got fireworks. We're gonna set him off in the house. Normally, I'd bust your head open, but you get a pass because you're mentally challenged. Ooh, take off your dress, lady, and come party with some real men, eh? All right, I'm warning you now, and you only get one. <laughs> That's it! Yeah! Oh, Jimmy, I can't allow you to assault these gentlemen. What the hell are you doing? I reported the Hoser sighting to the Heritage Protection Council of Canada, and they have proclaimed this land to be a national preserve, a protected domain for the endangered Hoser peoples. Are you freaking serious? I'm as serious as an Adam Agoyan film. Oh, I think he just called Jimmy a gonad. They're here to stay, Jimmy, and you, I'm afraid, are trespassing. What? Jimmy, check out these birthday candles from Rome that Kenny gave me. And it ain't even my birthday. Ah! Ooh, that's March. Ah! Ow! Uh, Jesus, another one. Oh! I think that's the last one. What? on, those Romans know how to party. Uh, uh, uh. <sighs> Look at these freeloaders living off the government like a bunch of war widows. Those stinking widows get all the breaks. <laughs> Ow! What the hell? Hi, Pop. Petey, what are you doing up there? I'm observing the neighbors for an anthropology paper. Hosers in the mist. I've collected fascinating data on their nesting patterns. I'm hoping to analyze a sample of their droppings. Some of them droppings are mine. How long you been up there? This is day six. You're hiding up a tree, spying on three men. Is that something I need to know about you, kid? No, but could you empty my pee jug? Whoa! Turn off the... Yo, McCool, tell these morons to turn their music down. I wish I could, Jimmy, but Canadian classic rock from the 80s is their cultural birthright. Would you tell an Indian not to bang a drum? A Quebecer not to eat poutine? An Albertan not to marry his cousin? Oh, my parents were cousins. No, wait, siblings. Hey, Jimmy, I got someone who wants to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Looking good, Mike. All right, if we can't touch these guys, we're just gonna have to drive them out. You want me to get the car? No, I want you to turn on the hose. <laughs> Let the ice-related injuries begin. <gasps> Ow! Uh, Cheech, give me a hand here. Yeah, sure, Jimmy. I'll do... Whoa! Ah! Whoa! Ow! Hey! Wow! Whoa! Oh. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, Jimmy. How the hell are you staying on your feet? The old beer cap on the boot. What a noble people. They use every part of the beer. All right. We're gonna cut their power, because if I gotta listen to Raise a Little Hell by Trooper one more time, I'm going on a shooting spree. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Why, you bastards. Time to play hardball. Nothing drives people out like good old toxic waste. That's probably what drove my third wife away. Yeah, Cheeks, toxic waste in your Brooklyn apartment. Beauty, eh? It's like the Northern Lights landed. You get the beer, I'll get the Kim Mitchell. That's it! One of us has got to go. So here's the deal. One game of Brewski Roulette. Mano a hozo. If I win, you guys move away and never come back. Oh, well, you're on, eh? But if we win, we get your house. My house? All right, fine. Either way, I get you mooks out of my life. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, and don't get cold feet. Oh, we will. I can't even feel my feet. What are you doing? You 
should be suiting up for the big game. I'm not playing. I'm out. I already got my PE credit. Are you kidding? You got a beautiful thing in your grasp, and I ain't letting you throw away my big chance. Your chance? How is this about you? Shut up and put on your skates, Frankenstein. If you like hockey so much, why don't you play? Because they won't let me. I don't want to give you the gory details, because there's a lot of them. But I got banned from hockey forever. Apparently, the only blades you can use are the ones in your skates. Aw, oh, Gina, I had no idea. Why would you? You're as dumb as a post. But you sure do shine on that ice. What a waste. Maybe I got one more game in me. You do? For you, I do. It's just the Moose Jaw Milkmaids, bunch of farmer's daughters. I'll cream them for you. You're the best, sis. All right, cut it out. Your beard's scratching me. According to the official rules of Brewski Roulette, scratched in the bar at Jerry's Tavern in Thunder Bay, three beers in the case are loaded. First one to spray two beers in his face loses, eh? Sounds legit. Jimmy, no! Have you lost your freaking mind? You're betting our house on a stupid drinking game? I won't let you do it. Ooh, shh! Shut up, you drunken mooch. Cookies are right. They're baiting you, Jimmy. You can't win. Hosers always think three beers ahead. I gotta do this. I can't live this way no more. Also, I'm kind of thirsty. <laughs> uh. <laughs> nice one, Jimmy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, just, uh... False alarm. It's <laughs> <laughs> down to four beers. Two beers, Jimmy. Two. Shut up, my cools. Pack her up, eh? You've been hosed. Not so fast. I wanted to study the effects of imported beer on hoser physiology. Everyone knows a genuine hoser's body will reject any beer that isn't brewed in Canada. You've been drinking American beer. You hosers are posers. So what? Bet's a bet, eh? And we won. That may be the case, but you will no longer enjoy the protective embrace of the Heritage Protection Council of Canada. Hosers are endangered, but goofball louts like you are a dime a dozen. You boys are on your own. Good day, eh? Well, Jimmy, looks like you better start packing. That was pathetic. I can't believe you lost! Who knew the Moose Jaw Milkmaids would be so freaking tough? Oh, look at that hot chick, eh? I'd sure like to slip a puck past her goalie. What did you say? Ah, oh, finally disposed of that toxic waste, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, that's it, toxic waste. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, former New York capo. In the old life, the feds were always up in my business. These guys had ears everywhere, and by ears, I mean bugs. But I didn't let that keep me from being a normal family man. Someone! That's my girl. Messing with the feds was a game. I got the fat bastard right here, and I'm gonna chop off his legs and feed him to the dogs! On the ground, now! Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha! Oh, good one, Jimmy. I'd offer you guys a turkey sandwich, but fuck you. If it was real important, we talk in code. But that came with its own problems. Cheech, I need you to pick up the magic potion from the Maharaja and take it to the wizard. And make sure you look into his crystal ball. Gabish. Gabish. By magic potion, you mean he ate keys of heroin, right? On the ground, now! 
Now that I'm in witness protection living in Canada, I don't ever gotta worry about bugs again. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob on once in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to a Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Cookie, that was super. You're a regular George Foreman in the kitchen. Thanks, Jimmy. And now for the knockout, cannoli. <clears throat> James McDougal. Who's asking? Angus McTavish. Don't ring a bell. Do I know you? No, lad. But our ancestors fought on the moors for three centuries. This weekend, you and I pay tribute to their bravery at the Regina Highland Games. Uh, speaky the English? I'm throwing down the gauntlet, laddie. See you at the caber toss. Go, McTab- Who was that? Some Australian lunatic in a skirt. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna regret asking, but what's your problem? There's this Dutch exchange student at school, Yetzi. No one pays attention to him. He said he feels invisible. And you care about Dutchie, why? I consider it a civic duty to aid new students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bleeding heart, save the whales, help the Dutchman. I get it. Here's my advice. School's like prison. He wants a rep? Tell him to kick someone's ass. Gina, not every problem can be solved through violence. <laughs> I'm not helping you with a dishes no more. You got it? Okay! See, Petey? I had a problem and violence solved it. Want me to demonstrate again? No. I'd appreciate it if you could keep Riff Raff like Scotty McBozo off of my doorstep. But you're a McDougal now. The Scottish community is finally inviting you into the fold. You just had to go and make me Scottish, didn't you? Why couldn't you just make me Italian? Because you'd have been too easily identified as ex mafioso. Oh, so Italian automatically means mob to you? You racist sack of sh. I gotta put one in your head, run your body through a meat grinder, and bury you in cement! But I take your point. So you'll attend the games then? Not a chance. If you refuse this challenge, the Scottish Canadian Times will brand you a coward. You'll wind up on their shite list, along with other things Scottish people hate, like the Queen, underwear, and fresh vegetables. Do you want your friends back home to find your picture in gear, Jimmy? I guess not. Then have fun at the games for Canada, where every culture gets a ridiculous summer fair. Remember, everybody be cool and act like you're Scottish. Just be crabby and cheap. Don't worry, Jimmy, we'll blend right in with these weirdos. Uncle Cheech, stay out of my closet. That's a good color on you. Sure, your lily-livered McDougal's grew a pair and showed up. Welcome to the Highland Games, you wankers. Thank you for inviting us. Don't get a swelled head, lassie. Every Scot in the phone book was invited. Right, to the kitchen with you, Nessie. You're on haggis duty. Go on! Those sheep's stomachs don't stuff themselves. Blend. Ah! Oh. To the field of combat, lads. Or should I say lassies? <laughs> See? Blend him right in. Let me get this straight. We gotta cook this thing's stomach. How are we gonna get it out, ma? Same way your father did with Joey the Fink. Oh! Oh! Hey! Oh! 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 Look at that! Hammer toss! Beat that, McDougal! You know. This kind of reminds me of collecting protection money back home. <laughs> Off the field! <laughs> oh, you throw like a bloody Englishman! Thanks, Angie. That's supposed to be an insult, you tit.
beat you. <laughs> Wheat Chief Toss! Snack on that, McDougal! This reminds me of the time we threw Big Cheese Romano off the roof! <laughs> Something's missing. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> and you got yourself a Scott. Why don't you change your name to Scott? Ah! Ooh! Oh, it's on. <laughs> what you doing? That's my girlfriend. I mean, uh, my mascot. There's a raft of sheep stomachs in the fridge, you daft Marys. Oh. Watch your back, lamb chop. <laughs> <laughs> This reminds me of something, too. Huh. I guess I never killed no one with a tree trunk before. What, you've been living in a cave? <laughs> Off the field again! Oh, victory for Clan McTavish! Good game, Anus. <laughs> Jimmy, aren't you mad he beats you? You're the sorest loser I know. Did I lose, Cheech? Did I? Ah, oh, but that's what you get for not going to the games, you bastard! Sorry, Yetzi. Who would have guessed the Saturday Academic Achievers Jamboree was just a bunch of grade-grubbing dorks? But don't worry, we'll find you some cool friends. <laughs> My sister suggested you pick a fight with someone to get noticed, which is totally absurd. Yetzi, cut it out! That's not going to work! Will you stop it? That's enough! <gasps> Ah, sh**. Yetzi, I'm so sorry! Wait, you forgot your teeth! Hey, everyone! Thought I'd drop in. <laughs> oh, look! It's eccentric billionaire Richard Wheatthin. Do I smell haggis, or is that Jimmy's feet? <laughs> and he brought a studio audience to laugh at his dumb jokes. Might I say, Cookie, you look delicious. Can I try a bite? When it comes to haggis, I'm a bit of a gastronome. I've eaten it all around the world. Around the world? That would make you a gastronaut! Seriously? That was gold! Mmm, amazing. You can barely taste the intestines. Cookie, I have a proposition for you. I've been getting propositioned all day. <laughs> that gets a laugh? You're a bunch of dicks. This is my Scottish restaurant, Wee Wee Wheat Thins. For some reason, business has been slow. But I think we can turn this place around with Cookie as my new executive chef. Wow, Jimmy, what do you think? What's that think about? You can do this in your sleep. But who'll run the house? I will. How hard can it be to take care of two kids? Three kids. See? We'll all be learning new things. Go for it. It might be fun. In that case, Mr. Weathen, I accept. To whom, Betty? I was stirring in the kilt, and I'm feeling a wee bit bad. I'm your new chef, Cookie McDougal. Now, I'm a little new to Scottish cooking, but I've been doing a wee bit of research, and I'm sure all you lads and lassies will be great. <laughs> These have been in the freezer for three months, and you want to serve them to customers? This is a restaurant, you jag off, not a Viet Cong prison camp. Are you sweating in the soup? What the hell is wrong with you? You know what? Screw it. Let's just serve him warmed over piss. Squat down. No? Then start over. <laughs> you can't cry in the kitchen. If I see one more of you motherfuckers crying in here, it's in the fucking oven you go. Head first. You think I'm playing? <laughs> and let that be a lesson to all of you.
meat in pan. This stuff's red, but it'll have to do. Add onion. Done. Why doesn't it look like the picture? Daddy, I need help with my homework. I'm a little busy, but... What's the capital of Canada? That's easy, capital C. Daddy, I only eat gluten-free. Is that gluten-free? Don't worry, I ain't gonna charge you. Pop, I broke Yetzi's jaw. Good for you, son. But he's my friend. So you straightened out your friend. I'm proud of you. But I feel like a monster. I said I'm proud of you. Quit fishing for compliments. Daddy, can you hand wash my bras and panties? Oh, I ain't touching that stuff. Ha, what's in a nook, sugar? Mom does it. Pop, is that meat sauce? I don't eat anything with a face. We're having face for dinner? I want a chicken fingers. Daddy, I gotta make a solar system. Daddy, I need clean panties. Pop, I almost killed Yetzi. I want a chicken finger. I think I need counseling. Daddy. Pop, Daddy. I almost killed Yetzi. Chicken fingers! Yeah! That's it! Go to bed, all of you. But it's only 6.30. I said go to bed! You know what? Change my order to face. You too, Cheech. Bed! But Jimmy! Do I have to take off this belt? I'll be good. I hope Yeti's in school today. I feel terrible about... What the hell? Aw, poor little Yeti. Do you want another blended cheeseburger? Hey, there's the bully that did this to Yeti! <laughs> Gina's wrong. High school's not like prison. Though I do have goo all over my face. I bet that happens in prison. Amazing, Cookie. In just one week, you've totally turned this place around. How did you do it? Get the hell out of my kitchen. I'm trying to work here. <laughs> now, now. I am your boss. Sorry, sorry. Mom, Pop ruined my underwear. He made me go to bed at 6.30 last night. I've been up since 3 a.m. I ain't naming no names but a certain fat ass ruined my homework. Jimmy! I need a change. What the hell? Look at this freaking place. There's footprints on the ceiling, the TV's on fire, and why am I standing in three feet of water? Oh, for God's sake, where's your father? Jimmy! Hey, Cook. What the hell's going on here? Nice to see you, too. Look at this place. What exactly do you do all day? Besides work nine to five? Okay, 10 to 3, 11 to 2 with a long lunch. I'm busting my butt at the restaurant 24-7, and you can't even keep this house going? Me? What kind of mother leaves her family starving and laundry lists and having to figure out the capitals of Canada all by themselves? What about your womanly duties? Oh, of course, my womanly duties. How could I forget? Remind me again what those are. Like having dinner ready on the table for your husband? Like it says in the Bible? What part of the Bible says that? You know, the part where Jesus fights the whale. I thought this restaurant thing was going to be a nice little hobby. Did you just say nice little hobby? That's it. I'm out of here. Where you going? Back to work, where I get some respect. I respect you plenty. It's not like I told you to get in the kitchen, take off your top, and make me a sandwich. Which actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Since Cookie won't listen to reason or the Bible, we gotta shut this place down. You know, for the good of the kids. Kills me to see him neglected like that. Special Agent McCool, nice of you to drop by. <laughs> Full disclosure, Cookie, I sometimes moonlight as the regional health inspector. Well, I'd offer you a bribe, but my kitchen is so spotless, you could eat off the floor. Speaking of which, you done licking the floor yet, Rodney? Don't worry, Cookie. My visit tonight is strictly as a haggis and cockalicky craving customer. Waiter, there's a hand in my soup. And you're closed. You can't do this. Sorry, Cookie. Wee Wee Wheat Thins is now officially a crime scene. Jeez, tough break, Cook. But hey, you had a good run. No shame in that. Oh, for shame, there's a foot in the salad bar. You're a great chef. You deserve success. And you would have had it, but what are you going to do? It's the unpredictable hand of fate. Actually, it was the hand of Lorenzo. What I'm saying is, maybe this is a sign that your place is at home with your family and their laundry. You're right, Jimmy. Nothing to do now but take my failed ass home. Bada bing! <laughs> Jimmy. What the hell?
Excuse me, sir, do you have a reservation? What are you talking about, Teresa? It's me, this is my house. Nope, this is Mighty McDougal's House of Haggis. You turned our house into a restaurant? You said you wanted me home, so I came home. But it ain't fair to my customers to shut down, so I brought them with me. Thanks for being so supportive, sweetheart. I do not remember being supportive. And I do not remember you having a reservation. <laughs> Cheech, will you look at what Cookie's done to this place? I know. If I do a good job, I could make dishwasher. Gina, how about getting the old man some food? I'm starving here. No can do, Pop. We're full up. <laughs> now, I'll get you a shrimp cocktail. And a beer. No dice. All we got here is Rob Royce. Can we get a Heineken, a spritzer, and a fuzzy navel? Three Rob Royce coming up. For the last time, I do not want to buy a f***ing rose. Finally, a little peace and quiet. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, seriously? And he's like, Tut, seriously. Wow, so you do have genital warts. <laughs> <laughs> Restaurant's closed! You want a doggy bag? Bag this! Hey, Jack, shoot for Jimmy, have you lost your freaking mom? I can't stand it no more, Cook! I tried being supportive, but this restaurant thing is tearing our house apart! Shwash! Baby, I need you! The kids need you! Shut down this circus and let's be a family again! Wait, you said I was great! You said I deserved success! And now you're running around like a freaking animal killing my business! We're shutting this place down too! Oh well, beat sawn off hands. Ah, crap. That was you? How could you do that to me? Cookie, I'm sorry, I was losing my mind. You have no idea how hard it is to run a household on your own. I don't? You looked after the house for a week, Jimmy. I've been doing it for 16 years. Enjoy sleeping on the couch, mister, because you ain't getting nowhere near my meat locker tonight. That's kind of a weird thing to call your vi Oh, you mean the bedroom. Ow! If you want this <laughs> shrimp cocktail, you're going to have to throw some pants on. <laughs> Oh. Cookie's miserable, and I feel terrible. That's marriage for you. What are you gonna do? She was happy working at the restaurant, and we blew it. I gotta go make this right. How much righter can you get? She's back in the kitchen where she belongs. She was in a kitchen, you moron, and I'm putting her back there. Jimmy, she's already there. Teach, maybe sit this one out, all right? Fine by me. I want off this freaking emotional roller coaster anyway. All right, what do you want? I've realized that prison rules don't apply in Canada. Here, people reward the victim, not the aggressor. If I want to be surrounded by girls like Yetzi, I need to get my ass kicked. Wait a second. You want me to beat you up in front of the girls? I want some of the action he's getting. What better way to get sympathy than by being unjustly trounced by a thug? Edie, think this through! <gasps> Hurry up, come on, hit me! No, get lost, you whack job! Come on, just a few good shots! Real quick, give me what I want! Let go of me, you freaking psycho! <gasps> now Yetzi's bully is assaulting a little girl! Get him! <laughs> hey, what are you doing? What? When in Rome. <laughs> Okay, what are we doing here? McCool called, said there was a major situation happening. Jimmy, what's going on? And why are you dressed like an undertaker? Good evening, Chef Cookie. Welcome to the reopened Wee 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 Things. I'll be your new matron D. Good news, Cookie. Your husband helped us solve the mystery of the severed hand. <gasps> Thanks to Jimmy, you're back in business. Oh, Jimmy, you big sweet moron, you. Sorry I messed things up for you, Cook. Gosh, it's kind of slow tonight. Only two customers. It's 8.30. The place should be packed. Maybe they heard about the hand in the soup. People talk, you know. Or maybe it was the fat, naked, hairy guy hitting people with his junk. Hmm. I was worried this might happen. You see, Cookie, haggis is strictly a novelty food. People only ever try it once, usually under the influence of alcohol. So... There won't be any repeat customers. Not a one, I'm afraid. Wee 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 Thins has run its course. Then why'd you bother reopening? Yeah, why'd I get my hopes up? 
What can I say? For me, Scottish food can be very haggis-forming. <laughs> Give it a rest. You know what? You and your stupid restaurant just about ruined my marriage. Well, I guess I ain't a cook no more. Baby, in the kitchen of my heart, you'll always be head chef. Aww. A round of drinks for everyone. We're celebrating the birth of me son. <laughs> How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a big shot in the New York crime family. Now I'm in witness protection in Canada. But I'll never forget that day. I was forced to leave the only home I've ever known. Cookie, kids, get your butts in gear. Let's get this vacation started. Canada awaits. Daddy, just because we're going overseas doesn't make this a vacation. I ain't denying it. I was in denial. I couldn't face the fact that I was leaving everyone I ever loved and taking my wife and kids with me. Isn't this fun? A family road trip. Who's up for another round of window uppy downy? Up, down, up, down. Whoa. Up, up, he down. always knows what it's gonna do. All right, you'll be under RCMP protection from here on. Off you go. It's cool. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Bienvenue. Come along, I have blankets and whiskey for all of you. This will warm your cockles. If it's gonna warm my cockles, I'll need a bigger blanket. I'm Special Agent Straight McCool. My mission is to help you assimilate, keep a low profile, and ensure you don't violate our nation's laws. I'm sorry. Violate what? <laughs> what a spirited group. I loved this assignment the minute I was given it. Let the protection begin. Hop in. You gotta be shitting me. And then they took us to this crazy place called Vagina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of you are thinking about a vacation up here, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. City, home of the Jews, the body of mobster Paul Vincenzo was pulled from the Hudson River. Foul play is suspected. Hey, look! Paulie the Target got whacked. I can't believe it. He was always so careful. I wonder who did it. I'm guessing Vinny April did it. The Hudson's always been his go-to. Nah, look at the bruises on his face. Must have been Benny the Bruiser. My money's on Timmy, sissy bum. That guy'll f you up. Two ones! Holy craps! Snake Eyes! It was my cousin Sammy! That's the worst nickname ever! No, it's my cousin, comma, Sammy. Comma, Sammy? That's even worse. Your nephew, Nimrod! Snake Eyes Sammy! The guy's in trouble! If we can figure out he did it, so can Paulie's crew! Which means he's about to get whacked! I gotta save him! Ah, he's always about to get whacked. He's a good boy. You know, I still can't believe you stole Cookie from him. Whoa! I didn't steal no one. He was sent to Juvie, and Cookie needed his shoulder to cry on. All I did was show up with a hanky and a salami. You were so sweet, you big lug. You repoed my heart. And you stole mine. And then I stole you that necklace. So I hereby announce my candidacy for student council president. What's your platform? My platform? Thanks for asking, concerned student. If you elect me, I will ban all corporate sponsorship from school ground. Let's send the message that young minds are not for sale. Who's with me? That was painful to watch. What I have to say is important. I, I just can't get anyone to listen. Oh, little brother, you're so lame. The key to drawing a crowd isn't what you say, it's what you show. Thanks for coming to my brother's president thingy. We love you! And I have loved a ton of you. So I want you all to vote for my brother on the day you're supposed to vote, whenever that is. The issues. Tell them the issues. First off, more corporate sponsorship. <laughs> it's 
Let's no more corporate sponsorship. It's just one word. It doesn't matter. More bullying! <laughs> it's no more bullying. You have to add the word no. Okay. No more funding for music and the arts. <laughs> I got your message, Jimmy. How can I be of assistance? I got a problem. My cousin Snake Eye Sammy whacked Pooley the target. That's a serious accusation. I meant it as a compliment. But trust me, it was Sammy. He left his dice that always come up ones. All us wise guys have calling cards. My dad left an Italian sausage. Cheech left a cocktail onion. My calling card was a calling card. I figured I'd give the grieving family some minutes. I get that. Horse also likes to leave a calling card. Hey, same as Johnny Brand Flakes. You gotta get Sammy out of there. When police guys track him down, they'll torture him to rat me out. How could Sammy know where you are? I texted him. Mom, you have to talk Therese out of running. She's just gonna embarrass herself. Petey, I think it's great that your sisters finally realized there's more to life than binging, purging, and shopping. Are you sure you're not a little threatened by your chances? Are you kidding? I'm totally threatened by your chances. That's why you got to get her out of this. Petey, I'm not going to choose one of my children over the other. I love you all equally. You'll just have to make the best of it. Don't say I never do you any favors. I never say you don't do me any favors. Your whole job is doing me favors. I know. I just wanted a good entrance line. Hey, cuz, guess who? Sammy! Jimmy. Ho -ho! <laughs> hey, everyone, Sammy's here. I'll leave you two to your embrace. But remember, Jimmy, you vouched for him, so you're responsible for him. Hey, how you hey, doing? Good to see you. Hey, hey, how's it going? How is the trip, cuz? A breeze. Canadian cops are so freaking friendly. Which reminds me, I got presents for all of yous. Cheech, you son of a gun. Petey, you's getting so big. Teresa, holy moly, you must be the little squirt. And Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in a squad car, but may I say, you look like a million. You're so full of it. Keep it coming. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that pasta for Joel that I'm smelling? Your favorite. Welcome to Regina. Stun gun? Just what I always wanted. I'm a huge fan of your work, Cousin Snake Eyes. I can't wait to learn from the master. Ah! I'm all yours, kiddo. As soon as I'm done catching up with the real master, I am humbled to be in your presence. Really? I thought the folks back home would be mad about how I ratted everybody out. Ah, forget the ratting. Concentrate on the killing. You whacked on Gambini, for Christ's sakes. You're a legend. A legend? Really? You kidding me? Your nickname back home is the guy who whacked Don Gambini. Now that's a nickname. So much better than that Cousin Karma guy. The guy who whacked Don Gambini. It's got a nice ring to it. Wait, you saying I can go back home and they won't whack me? Oh, they'll still whack you, but with respect. Oh, that's so nice of them. But Sammy, I ain't like I used to be. I keep a low profile, stay out of trouble, and now you got it too. Sit down. Let me explain how life here works. Gina, if you're gonna have a stun gun, you gotta use it responsible. Give me that thing. First off, you gotta... Jesus! What's wrong with this? They used to have a safe... Take it! Just take it! Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in the squad car. I feel terrible. But you look great. I had to give you something. So, here. Oh, that's beautiful! Wait a minute. Isn't this the same necklace you gave Teresa? No. Mom, I can't find my new necklace. Maybe. <laughs> Sammy, you haven't changed one bit. Neither have you, Cookie. You haven't aged a day since high school. Yeah, those were good times. Remember the time we made out in the confession booth and confessed in real time? How could I forget? It was like, oh, God, Hail Mary. Oh, God, Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> And remember that time at junior prom when we kissed on the dance floor and the principal separated us, so you gave him a wedgie? It was my very first kiss. And my very first wedgie. Mm. 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 Sammy, get out here! What are you drinking? So, that just happened. <laughs>
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Will you quit talking about my womb? Jesus Christ, you talk! It's not that big a deal. You got a light? I, I can't believe it. Yeah, I know it's bad for me. I'm trying to cut down. I tried the patch, that works for sh**. All right, let's get down to business. Your ex kissed you, and now you're feeling ashamed and conflicted. You know exactly what's going on in my heart. You're truly miraculous. You do know I'm a figment of your imagination, right? You're too modest. Whatever. These feelings you have are completely normal. You fell for Jimmy because he was a bad boy, but he ain't no more. Enter Sammy. And these feelings won't go away unless you do something about them. You think I should tell Jimmy? Hell no! Do you know how Joseph was when I had someone else's kid? Moping and whining all the time? He wouldn't let it go. Always asking, who was bigger, Mary? Who was bigger? Who needs that, Cyrus? So what are you telling me? Get it out of your system. Have some fun with a guy. <gasps> you mean commit adultery? I could never do that. Technically, you already have. No, I haven't. When Jimmy gives it to you, you think about Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, Carrot Top. I don't know what that's about. The point is, it's a slippery slope. No, there's a big difference between thinking about someone and doing him. I cannot believe the Virgin Mary is telling me to have sex with another man. You're gonna burn in hell anyway, so what are you waiting for? These commandments aren't gonna break themselves. I figured I'd give you a tour. Get you used to your new home. Oh, after that meal, a walk's just what I need. Ain't nothing like that woman's cooking, huh? She's a real keeper. Yeah, cookie's the best. So, you guys happy? Yeah, sure. For real happy? Or I'm just saying that because I'm a married guy and I'm dead inside happy? Closer to the first one? On a scale of one to ten. Sammy, what are you getting at? Whoa, this is the little Italy in this town. Ain't it great? Sometimes we just come here and hang out for hours. How's the food? You kidding me? The place is run by a Chinaman. It won't happen overnight, but you'll adjust. See, look at them. That used to be us. You're misremembering. We used to sneak up behind wimps like that and take their money. Then we'd force them to tell us where they lived and hold up their parents. Sammy, cut it out. Listen, going straight ain't bad. Especially in a city where there's like zero crime. Exactly. It's a freaking gold mine. We're gonna clean up here. No, look, I pulled a lot of strings to get you into witness protection. Well. One. I only got one string, but I pulled it. So we can't live the old life. Now come on. Let's go to Little Italy and get an egg roll. This is where I work. It's a good job. A great job. I love this job. Proud of this job. You believe me? Jimmy, this is my bad. I was probably unclear when I explained it. Our policy is that staples must be lined up vertically, not horizontally. That's it. Do you have ow, any ow, idea ow, 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 who ow, ow. this man is? So, anyway, Toby, I was wondering if you could give my cousin a job. You'll just wind up making a fool of yourself. It's not like this is something you even care about. You're the one who'll make a fool of herself. You don't even have a platform. Hello? No, a platform is issues. A president should know this. You don't have any issues. Well, actually, you have lots of issues, but nothing to run on. Politics is a bitch. Bitch. Issues I'm, like, running on. If you elect me your school president, you will get to look at me all the time. And girls, if you don't vote for me, I will so screw you over. Thank you for seeing me, Jimmy. I didn't know I had a choice. Well, you didn't. I was being polite. Although I guess it was rude of me to say that, and for that, I'm sorry. Uh, me too? What's up? The crime rate, Jimmy. And I have no doubt that it's mostly due to your cousin Sammy. You can't prove nothing. Not yet, but it's just a matter of time. If Sammy goes to jail and talks, we'll have to move you to Quebec, and you have enough trouble with English. Do you really want to live somewhere where they speak French? I'm torn. I love their fries, toast, and kissing, but berets make my face look fat. I'm not kidding around, Jimmy. Get him in line, or else. Fuck Canada! 
with a per capita murder rate only slightly worse than Denmark. I just spoke to McCool. You gotta help me with Sammy. What's wrong? The guy's robbing anything he could get his hands on, and he's gonna ruin everything for us. You're being too hard on him, Jimmy. <laughs> Let me see that. It's so much fun, Ma. Best toy I ever got. So this is what a stun gun looks like. So where was I? Oh yeah, Sammy. You're being too hard on him. He's a bad boy, like you used to be. I think you're jealous. Why would I be jealous? Did I say you're jealous? I meant Sammy naked. I mean, how can I help? I can't watch him all the time. So when I'm at work and the kids are at school, you gotta keep an eye on his every move. You gotta be on him like white on rice. If he tries to get you off, you dig in and hold on tight. Where he goes, you go. When he comes- Stop it! What? I don't know. Look, Jimmy, as long as we're on the subject of Sammy, there's something I should maybe tell you. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I wish I could have some kind of sign telling me what to do. Guess who just robbed that bank? You idiot! Now that's what I call a sign. Do you know how much trouble you could get us into? Jimmy, let him go. Let's at least hear his side of the story. Fine. Thank you, Cookie. Okay. I staked out the bank, I hit the bank, I made off with the loot. By the me! Let me at him! Jimmy, stop! He's a reasonable man. Just talk to him. It took us a while to adjust to the rules when we got here. He's your cousin for crying out loud. Blood. Hey, everyone. I'd like you to meet my new doll. Kill him. And in second place, with 12 votes... Jason Hitler! <laughs> nine, nine, nine! Don't worry, mind Jason. There are better ways to seize power! And your new president, with 33 votes, Peter McDougal! What? How could I not have won? Teresa, you never registered yourself as a candidate. But Petey said he'd do that for me. You didn't do that for me? Politics is a bitch, bitch. <laughs> Whoa! What was that for? Jimmy saves your life, you do nothing but ignore everything he tells you, then you make a pass at his wife, and then you show up with some bimbo! In my defense, I made a pass at his wife and was turned down. That's why I got a bimbo. And what the hell did you kiss me for anyway? It really bothered me. Honestly, Cookie, I've been a wreck about it too. I got caught up in the moment. It was nostalgia. Old times. You look good. And you smelled nice. Knock it off! We may have to move because of what you've done. And as crappy as this town is, this is Canada. Things can always get worse. What are you thinking? I don't know, Cookie. I'm not thinking anything. I don't plan things. They just happen. I'm not smart like you and Jimmy and Cheech. Run a cheese. Who? Oh, where did all that come from? Sammy robbed the first vagina credit union. He's always been a good boy. No, it's terrible. McCool's already on to him. Sammy's gonna get arrested and we'll all have to move to Quebec City, France. I never liked that, Sammy. We gotta get them their money back, but without anyone knowing it was us who returned it. We gotta somehow break into the bank and make them take it back. The old reverse heist. Nobody freeze! Put your hands down and get up off the floor! Don't do what I say or you'll all get hurt. Exactly. Instead of outlaws, we'll be in-laws. Hey, Jimmy, I've been thinking. I'm real sorry about all the trouble I caused. I'll do anything to make it right. You just name it. You're going to help Cheech and I return the money. Did I hear you right? You're going to take perfectly good stolen money and return it to a bank? Those crooks! i never been so ashamed of this family. Gina. You broke my heart. Father. It's go time, boys. Put on your masks. Too bad the mask store was out of friends' masks. I had my heart set on being Rachel. Rock and roll. Everyone freeze! This ain't a robbery! Underground, you mugs. Now! Nobody be a hero. Now, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna open a safe, and you're gonna put this money inside it. 
Have you filled out a deposit slip? It ain't a deposit! Well, if you'd like to make an investment, you'll have to speak with Mr. Fielding. But he's on vacation till Thursday. I just want to give you this money! I can't process anything without an account number. Maybe this'll change your mind. <coughs> well? I can't process anything without an account number. This must be why the reverse heist never caught on. Just take it, will ya? We got made! Dirty screws! What are you doing? I don't know. But we gave the money back! Hi. Yeah, for f sake. No! No! Don't you die on me, Sammy. Not now. Not here, not like this. Looks like the bastards got me. Those bastards! It was just a matter of time. I lived a reckless life. I took too many chances. Plenty of unprotected sex. Shh, don't talk. And Jimmy, I gotta get this off my chest. When we was eight years old, I swept 20 bucks from my dad and blamed it on you. I know, it's okay. And when we was 14, and you got caught with all that weed, I was the one who hid it in your locker. Shh, 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 save your strength. And when we were 16, and your sister got knocked up, that was me. You really gotta stop now. All oh, this was a long time ago. And yesterday, I made a pass at your wife. Earlier today, too. You should probably die now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 